Slobodan Milosevic, former president of Yugoslavia and Serbia, is now in the dock. The first head of state to be tried by an international court for war crimes and genocide. Milosevic had driven whole communities from their homelands to make way for his fellow Serbs. His forces had murdered thousands of civilians. The wars he provoked launched the term ethnic cleansing. And they tore Yugoslavia apart. First Croatia and Slovenia, then Bosnia and Macedonia broke away leaving Serbia dominant in a much reduced Yugoslavia. In December 1995, the same Milosevic, who had been called the Butcher of the Balkans, was welcomed to Paris to sign the treaty that brought peace to Bosnia and the region. Everyone at the ceremony knew that only Milosevic could prevent further Serb aggression. He was the linchpin of the peace. I didn't have a problem with talking to him. He was quite confident and um, said he was glad this was over and uh, looked forward to better relations. And I said uh, that I did too. It would depend upon how the the Bosnian peace took hold and whether the oppression and killing ended. Ja sam siguran da je pred nama puna normalizacija odnosa između Jugoslavije i Sjedinjenih država i jedna intenzivna saradnja. Back home in Serbia, Milosevic was a hero. I bilo mnogo priče, jednostavno zaista iskrene čestitke za posljednju sporazum u Dejdu, ne samo sa moje strane. Even his wife Mira, a strong supporter of communist China and Cuba, welcomed his newfound friendship with the West. Da sam smatrala i da sam o tome govorila svima oko sebe, dakle uopšte takva je bila atmosfera u kući. Da evo, nadamo se skinuće nam sankcije, nema više rata, Otići će izbjeglice ili će jedan veliki broj njih otići. Moći ćemo da gradimo, tako da kažem, jedan svet kroz veliki oporavak i kroz novi koncept razvoja. Most of the sanctions imposed during the Serbs war against Bosnia had been lifted. To get the West to lift the rest of them, Milosevic had to prove he was a democrat. His opportunity came a year later, in local elections. Uspeh lokalnih izbora u Srbiji predstavlja će veliki doprinos u stvorenju razvojnog programa. That night he got a shock. Against all predictions, the opposition defeated him in 17 of Serbia's largest towns and cities. The next day, Milosevic confided in one of his coalition partners. Rekao je da da im je saopštio kako se raduje što su izgubili i da naprotiv da će mu to samo poboljšati imidž u međunarodnoj zajednici i da niko više neće moći da mu kaže eto kako smo nedemokratska zemlja kada je to prestonico upravlja gradonačelnik iz redova opozicije. Svakome ko radi u interesu građana želimo uspeh, a dobro je i da opozicija počne trlja glavu sa tim problemom. This acceptance of defeat by Milosevic's party spokesman horrified the activists. Prosto je to bio signal da se veliki broj ljudi javi i ukaže na niz nepravilnosti tokom biračkog procesa. Ja sam tražio da kod predsjednika Miloševića sastanak imali smo ponovo 
ukazao sam mu na to. Ključni moment se dogodio uveče u 20 časova kada ga je Mira pitala da li je to istina da on fašistima, četnicima, kakav je već vokabular njenih reči, želi da preda vlast. Tada ga je izgrdila i napala i onda kreće njegova promjena odluke. Slobodan and Mira's marriage was a political partnership that had begun in high school. A politician in her own right, she had pushed him to take power in 1987. Now she led a small party of her own, a member of the coalition that had just lost the local elections. I heard that the elections were not objective, but they were not the results that were shown in the public. It might have been a lot of money. You know, there are different ways to make the elections, to make the elections false, to make the results different. The influence and the pressure of the Yugoslavian Levic and the Mr. Marković bio veoma veliki, tako da u toku te noći, sutra dan, sigurno da je napisan čitam niz stotine i stotine žalbi su napisane za pojedine izborne mesta, da bi to imalo nekakvu zakonsku formu i da bi naši sudski organi donosili odluke kako su donali. Mislim da je potpuno jasno da se želo po svaku cenu da se zadrže izbori. Milosevic now set out to use courts he controlled to reverse the opposition's victories. He reckoned without the actions of a tiny group of people in the city of Nish. Nish had been a Milosevic stronghold for a decade. On election night, his party was so confident they'd already planned the victory celebration. Ali tamo neki posle dva, tri sata već se videlo da socijalistička partija počela da gubi. Mogu da tvrdim da je iz Beograda naređivano da mora se pobedi. Mogu da kažem da je Toša Inović peš šest puta zvao. To znam sigurno. Da je Krivo Kapić neki naš tamo naređivo moramo, ajmo junaci, ajmo ovo. Tako da, to sam, to je stvarno istina. Their problem was that at most polling stations, the votes had already been counted. Na kraju te ljude vatala panika kad već nije moglo da se stisne rezultat. Jer ti su ljudi, možda, ti su ljudi nešto odradili, neki, ti odbačeni naši ljudi, neki deo posla da dođe do neke panike. A posle kad su uhvatili paniku, onda se dešavalo i ovo najprljavije što se vidi sad. So what they did was intercept the results before they were delivered, along with the bags of ballot papers, to the election commission. But a copy of each result had also been given to the opposition's representatives on the commission. Ja držim kopije zapisnika sa pravim rezultatima. Izborna komisija, u izbornoj komisiji se čitaju neki sasvim drugi rezultati. As more results were read out, a pattern emerged. Ukupan broj ljudi koji su izašli na birališta nije promenjen, ali je promenjen rezultat tako što je našem kandidatu oduzeto 300 glasova, a njihovom je dodato 300, ili 500, ili 800, zavisi od toga koliko je bilo potrebno da u ukupnom zbiru njihov kandidat pobedi svoje zapisnike, tresnemo sto i kažem, gospodo, vi ste uhvaćeni u krađi. The majority of the commission, Milosevic supporters, dismissed her objection. And without the falsified papers, she could not prove the fraud. All the opposition could do was protest. They soon brought the city to a standstill. The police prepared for a showdown. Video cordone police, i to onako obučeni u onoj panci, sve po bočnim ulicama koje se graniče sa opštinom. Znam da mi je sin sa demonstrantima, onda sam rešio da nešto preduzmem. 
After 22 years of loyal service to Niche City Council, the committee clerk now risked everything. Enlisting the help of two colleagues, he set out to steal the falsified papers. The main doors to the committee room, where the election results were kept, were under 24-hour police guard. But a balcony, accessible from the floor above, provided another way in. They dared not turn on the lights, but the clerk had told his colleague precisely where the incriminating papers were. U toj situaciji iščekivanje je kao večno zelo, kao što ga nema, gde će dalje, našao, da li otišao. I onda od jednared za nas, da kažem, katastrofa, šok, čujemo tresak jedan. E sad, verovatno to nije bilo toliko strašno, ali u onoj tišini noći, kao da je bomba pala. In fact, it was only a chair. I sad iščekujemo, slušamo da li će pucnjava da se desi, da li milicija, šta je, mislim, ništa, tišina, mrtva i dalje posle tog treska. On daje znak da je došao, mi ga izlačimo, on sav jadan, spremno od straha, preznojen, šta je bilo. But he had brought out the falsified papers. They showed how crudely the voting figures had been changed. If the theft was discovered, Milosevic's party would have the grounds they wanted to get the elections annulled. So the clerk had planned to return the papers after photocopying them. But his accomplice lost his nerve. He said, I don't want to go back to that, but then he would be able to arrest me. And then the only solution is Te originale vradim ja lično drugog izbora nisam imao ili neko bolje rešenje nisam našao. U devet došao predsjednik, milicioner od vrata. I vidim ispod oka, gledam, oni svi nešto razgovaraju, ja to metem onako diskretno tamo gde je bilo. He took his photocopies to the local opposition leader. I asked him how he asked, I asked him something, and I said, I don't want anything. I hope that you will use it as you need to use it as you need. The opposition tried to get the local media to report this scandal, but Milosevic's party controlled all television and radio in Niš. Then the opposition got another break. Vlasnik televizije Najs je pozvao ljude u koaliciji zajedno i rekao je ja ovo više ne mogu da trpim, ovakve laži na državnoj televiziji, evo ja vam dajem u vreme drugog televizijskog dnevnika da dođete na moju televiziju i da kažete šta se stvarno dešava. TV Najs' normal fare was pirated videos and dancing girls, but now it got serious. Mrs. Zhivkovich was chosen to put the evidence before the voters. Čuvena ženska dilema, aha, ima malo vremena, da li da ja idem da operem kosu ili da malo proverim te svoje podatke, ipak ću se ja doterati, a podaci su sveži. Mi smo videli da su primjerci zapisnika iz kojih se čitaju rezultati na najgrublji način falsifikovani tako što su građani Niša tada mogli da prvi put jasno vide šta se te noći desilo i videli na koji način su socijalisti pokrali izbore. Students from Niš walked 140 miles to Belgrade to demand justice. While they were on the road, 
the local court ruled that the opposition had won the election in Nish. When the students faced Milosevic, he was charm itself and readily promised to chase down the election cheats. <laughs> He could afford to be magnanimous over Nish because everywhere else the courts had already ruled in favor of his coalition. Since then, the opposition had been protesting throughout Serbia. The victory in Nish gave them new hope. Night after night, the protests grew. That was all the time the situation to tell people just don't use any violence, don't even step on the uh, grass, you know, so that we don't be blamed for anything. Of course, we used some eggs, you know, not more than that. Milosevic and his brand of nationalism remained popular with older voters. His wife refused to believe young people had really turned against him. to prećutkivao, saslušavao, nešto preduzimao, ne preduzimao, ali uglavnom ona se nije uopšte kolebala. After weeks of daily protests, Milosevic was persuaded to take a huge gamble. His party prepared a counter demonstration in the heart of the capital. Sigurno da je, da se postoji ljudi koji imaju možda taj dan trebao da, da bude u funkciji stvaranja uh, uh, novih problema u Srbiji, stvaranja nereda, <coughs> možda čak i stvaranja uslove da Srbija uđe u nekako varendno stanje kako bi se možda svi ovi nesporazumi reši. The state of emergency would enable the regime to call out the army and, crucially, ban future demonstrations. On the 35th day of the protests, Milosevic supporters were given the day off on full pay and brought to Belgrade. Leaders of the ruling coalition gathered at a hotel in the city center. Kako su rasle tenzije, očigledno da je bilo prisutno tu jedno izuzetno militantno jezgo iz same jugoslovenske levice, spremno na sve moguće vrste sukova. Čak su to i javno i govorili u samoj Moskvi. I tu smo se sakupili, tu smo čekali da idemo na miting. Miting je trebao da počne, ja mislim, negde oko 12 sati. I moj muž je trebao da govori na tom mitingu. The opposition had 80,000 demonstrators on the streets that day, 
outnumbering Milosevic's supporters by two to one. Taj jedan narod koji je doveden iz unutrašnjosti nikakvu predstavu nije imao šta se događalo u Beogradu, jer je Milošević manipulisao preko medija. RTS naravno ništa nije prikazivo, a i ono što je prikazivo to je bila mala grupa, rulja, razularene bande. From the moment they set foot in Belgrade, Milošević's supporters were set upon by the opposition. Ljudi koji su došli u Beograd su bili bukvalno žrtvovani ljudi iz unutrašnjosti. And someone had ordered the police to keep off the streets. Zvao Nebojšu Čovića, gradonačenika, i pitao sam ga, Nebojša, šta se ovo događa? Nigde nema milicije, nama batinaši iz opozicije napadaju naše građane. Ušao sam u moj centar za obaveštavanje u Skupštini grada, gde postoje kamere koje pokrivaju ključne raskrsnice i ključne delove Beograda, sve to bilo isključeno. Nigde na ulici nisam video policajca kada sam prešao. Telefonirao sam potom Radovanu Stojčiću, tadašnjem načelniku resora javne bezbednosti ili pomešniku ministra za javnu bezbednost i pitao ga što što se to događa, zašto je to tako? On mi je rekao da je lično Slobodan Milošević zabranio da policija izađe. At 1.30, a Milošević supporter shot an opposition demonstrator in the head. Back at the hotel, Milosevic's wife called for action. In one moment, the woman Gospodža Marković said, what are you waiting for? It should be activated by the army of Yugoslavia to get all this broken, to get all this broken, and so on. I remember very well that I said then, Gospodža Marković, please, calm down. There is no reason why the army will not have any interest on the streets of Beograd. There is no reason why the army will not have any interest on the streets of Beograd. As president of Yugoslavia, Lilic had the authority to declare a state of emergency and call out the army. Milosevic could call in the police to stop the violence, but he wanted a state of emergency, so he still refused. Ja sam nazvao Miloševića i pitao sam ga zašto to radi. On je počeo da, da, da vrišti, da se dere, kao kukavice, plašite se. Naš sam ja rekao, Slobodane, dogovorili smo se da policija bude i da ne dozvolimo da dođe do obračuna. The mayor of Belgrade was a crucial ally of Milosevic, but the violence on his streets was stretching his loyalty to breaking point. Na sve to sam ja Milošević odgovorio da ima rok od 20 minuta, da ukoliko u tom roku ne dobijemo policiju koja treba da uđe da razdvoji građane, Da bi se izbjegao građanski rat, ja silazim dole i preći ću na stranu ljudi koji učestvuju u protestu. On mi je spustio slušalicu, ali posle 15 minuta me je zvao Radovan Stojčić i rekao da ima nalog za izobrenje da policija uđe. Soon after, the riot police set about closing off the main square to allow Milosevic to speak in safety. He blamed the weeks of demonstrations on the usual suspects. His supporters lapped it up. But his objective that day had not been achieved. As demonstrators struggled home, 
Milosevic and his close advisers held a post-mortem. His wife berated them for allowing the police to stop the clashes too soon. The chance to declare a state of emergency had been missed. The opposition resumed their peaceful demonstrations, which now became unstoppable. On the 78th day of the protests, Milosevic finally gave in. He pushed through a special law to overrule his courts and give the opposition their election victories. Zoran Djindjic became the mayor of Belgrade and the opposition took power in another 14 of the largest towns and cities in the country. More than half of Serbia's population now found themselves living under opposition-controlled local councils. Milosevic's grip on power had been loosened. But when in trouble, he had always known how to win Serb votes. He played the nationalist card. He had come to power a decade before by championing the cause of the Serb minority in Kosovo. Kosovo is not an ordinary part of Serbia. Kosovo is only the heart of Serbia. The whole of our history is on Kosovo. All of our monasteries are on Kosovo. Serbia's claim to its southern province of Kosovo dates back over 700 years. By Milosevic's time, nine-tenths of those living there were not Serbs, but ethnic Albanians. They had long enjoyed substantial autonomy, but Milosevic had shut down Kosovo's parliament and stripped the Albanians of their political rights. A small group of Kosovo Albanians responded by setting up the Kosovo Liberation Army, the KLA. In 1996, they set out to attract the world's attention. Ne <laughs> Dhe të cilat shpërthyn në të kryesisht në për kompët të refugjatve ose të quim kolonizatorve të rritë Kosovës, në nivell të Kosovës dhe në për stacionet të policis. One of the grenade throwers was a law student in Kosovo's capital, Prishtina. Atër është dhe vendosa vendin ku mund tjetë më efektiv aksionit. Në qendrën e miksis, në atë kohë nuk më sënë në Shqiptare. Në atë kohë ishte bëshatisur shkolla, edhe kështë në mund shumë me refugjat. Kam dalë në rrugë dhe pikrisht aty ku unë kam pasu të akryja aksionin, edhe sëtë dhe atë herë kanë qenë disa kios që të hamburgat. I was able to get the bomb and I was able to get the bomb and I was able to get the bomb and I was able to get the bomb. 
kiosk në hamburgerë dhe kam marrë hamburgerë. Kështu që, kur ka nalë policia tja që të veprojnë me drita të kaltra me shumë e shumë të tjera, unë kam dalë nga hamburgeri këshumë indiverend të i hangë nga hamburger në rrugë. Edhe kam kalu në mes të policisë. Tipi që në primer zë tosë u terroristi që ki akti shqipterski separatistë në kosmetu. The synchronized attacks in six towns in Kosovo put the KLA on the map. But without serious weapons, they were no threat to Milosevic. Then an ill wind blew them some good. In the late spring of 1997, the government in neighboring Albania collapsed. Anarchy followed. Për grumullimin dhe blerin e armëve me shmimet arsyshme atëherë. Dhe kemi kryu tri depo të cilat më vonë kanë funksionu dhe janë tërhek për Kosovë. To evade Serb border patrols, the KLA revived an ancient method of delivery. Oni odvedu konje preko granice, natovare ih sa oružjem i puste ih. I oni sami znaju put i dođu kući na Kosovo gde ih čeka organizacija koja preuzima oružje i nosi po selu. Tako da vrlo malo ubijenih, vrlo malo likvidiranih terorista je bilo u toj graničnoj glidini jer oni jednostavno nisu nišli tu. Tu su išli samo tovari. With their new weapons, the KLA's attacks became more deadly. Milosevic's paramilitary police hit back hard. We got a call from our correspondent, who was scared to death. He said there was, there was this shooting taking place in the village of Likoshan. When his photographer reached the village, he found that 20 Albanian men had been shot dead there by the Serb police. We took photos of each and every one of them, the corpses. We decided to set up an agency on the web so we can show this to the world. It worked. The international community now began to take notice. Uh, Serb forces were on the rampage and it looked exactly like the start of the ethnic cleansing in Bosnia, and you could see that the uh, Milosevic and his cronies were looking at ways of doing it all over again, but this time in Kosovo. That's why I went to Belgrade in order to confront Milosevic with what was happening. He greeted me with elaborate courtesy. I made it plain that the present situation was one that the international community would not accept. He once then went back to the Battle of the Field of Crows in 1389 and said that Kosovo had always been Serbian since then and it was going to remain Serbian. I did put him on the point that on that basis you know, Britain could lay claim to large chunks of France. I have to say that I leave with very grave concerns from what I have learnt in my day in Belgrade. In particular, I am disturbed at the reports that are reaching me that there was a further senior, serious operation in Kosovo overnight. He had heard that a Serb force was now targeting the home of the KLA commander-in-chief, whom they suspected of murdering several Serbs. <laughs> Ka pas me të vërtet një përvojt e madhe u shtarake. 
As the Serbs approached Yashari's village, his comrades urged him to escape. Adam Yashari had decided the KLA needed a martyr. Yashari i ljudi koji su bili naoružani bili su spremni da poginu po svaku cenu. Mi smo imali problem što su oni kao taoce držali žene, decu i starce. Mi smo ih, policija ih je danima pozivala megafonom da puste taoce, da predaju oružje. Svaki sljedeći pokušaj našeg prilaska stvarao je mogućnost da u redovima policije bude još više žrtava. I iz tog razloga je bilo neophodno da se koristi jedan deo artiljerijskih sredstava. When all firing from the Yasharis had stopped, the Serbs entered the compound. The women and children left alive were hiding in a cellar. She was the only survivor. Yashari and 45 of his fighters and family were killed. 12 of the dead were women. 11 were young children. Yashari's death had the effect he intended. In Pristina, a hundred thousand turned out in support of the KLA. Their protest was broken up by Serb police. Six foreign ministers were called to London. They were the contact group, which had been created to settle arguments between Russia and the West during Milosevic's previous wars. What prompted Manuel Albright and I to seek the meeting is that the longer we let this go, the worse it was going to become. We met at Lancaster House in a room where we had met a number of times. And I said, gentlemen, remember that history is watching us. And our predecessors sat in this room and watched Bosnia burn. The British and Americans were determined to reimpose the full range of economic sanctions against Milosevic. У нас произошел очень тяжелый разговор с Мадлен Олбрайт. Почему вы требуете, чтобы мы бы разворачивали во все санкции? Почему мы загоняем в угол Югославию, которая идет на какие-то на какие-то уступки? The truth is, I was pretty obnoxious. I mean, I kept feeling that we had this was a crucial meeting, and that we couldn't start giving away things uh, early. The argument is однозначный, что Косово what I pressed Yevgeny on is that we really had to be seen to respond to what was happening within Kosovo. If we really wanted to change Milosevic's thinking, the most important, useful way to do it was the commercial sanctions. Мы тогда пытались немного охладить пыл наших западных партнеров, потому что мы понимали, что принятие санкций, на что западные партнеры уповали, почему они, чего они требовали, это может еще больше ухудшить ситуацию. The rest of the group ignored the Russian objection and decided to impose new economic sanctions on Serbia. They told Milosevic he must start talks with the Kosovo Albanians on autonomy. 
Milosevic was adamant that as Kosovo was a province of Serbia, how it was ruled was a purely domestic concern. To ram the point home, he held a referendum with a carefully formulated question. Will you accept foreign mediation in solving the Kosovo problem? This referendum is Serbia and Serbia. I want to say that poručim albanskim liderima na Kosovu neka se manu belosvetskih dušebrižnika koji brinu svoje a ne njihove brige 95% of Serbs voted as Milosevic wanted the Kosovo Albanians boycotted the referendum the more Milosevic dismissed their demands the more Kosovo Albanians turned to the KLA we realized that we were going to have to, first of all, find out who these KLA were, and secondly, somehow try to get them into the peace process. We assumed there must be a leadership there, but it was a little like the search for the Northwest Passage. We went out looking for people to talk to. There were roadblocks everywhere. People had put up rakes and plows and stuff just to block the roads. There was shooting in the area, but this was clearly in Albanian control. As the Americans hoped, the KLA were tracking them and made a kind of contact in the first village they visited. We went upstairs in the house to sit down and we were talking to the village chief and quite unexpectedly, a rather dashing man with a beard uh, carrying a weapon that looked larger than him came and just jammed himself into the seat. Come back and let you talk to us. If you want, we can talk here, we can go outside. There wasn't a lot of room, so he practically sat on Holbrook's lap as if Holbrook were Santa Claus. In fact, the Americans had got no nearer to the KLA top brass. But the KLA had won valuable publicity. The picture went around the world, apparently showing Americans and KLA rubbing shoulders. And the photograph did become part of the legend of Kosovo. And uh, it infuriated Milosevic. For us, it was an extraordinary surprise. The fact that the President Holbrook allowed him to remove the cipels and that the boss of Bosu Čarapama sits with the terrorists and talks with him. The American president got an earful. J'ai donc téléphoné à Bill Clinton, au président Clinton, pour lui faire part de mon étonnement et lui dire que je considérais que ce n'était pas là une initiative heureuse et que c'était le sentiment de l'ensemble de l'Union européenne. But the Americans pressed on. A week later, Ambassador Holbrook used a conference in Switzerland as a cover for another assignation. The man the KLA had chosen to speak for them was a refugee living with his family on social security. We didn't know much about the KLA. Our intelligence didn't make it clear who was in charge of it, where they got their money, how it was organized, or even what they stood for. Asking them to exercise restraint 
when they were ready fighting for their lives was a difficult thing to do, and I understood that. Më tha që në këtë procese si për ne do t'i imponojmë filimisht, Miloševiqit, në rrëshimet e tila kushtet të tare që 35 vjetë më vonë ato të rrëshimet të shenë në pavarësinë e Kosovën. I may have suggested to Mahmoudi right away that that was a possibility if they handled themselves correctly. Even if it was only a possibility, this was the best news the KLA could have heard. After the meeting, they set out to make themselves more user-friendly to the West. During the summer of 1998, the KLA killed 80 Serb police and 60 civilians. They took over two towns and claimed they would soon liberate all of Kosovo. The truth was, they didn't yet have a proper army. The Serbs did. They now targeted entire villages, driving people out and burning their homes. Kad ulazite u selo i svih kuća veliki zidovi poče da se puca i tako dalje. Policija i vojska uvek u samoodbrani reaguje kako zna i ume da se sačuva i tako dalje i tu je moguće da je bilo i prekoračenja. Secretary Albright ordered me to go see Milošević and to make it clear this absolutely had to stop. He told me that they were simply conducting operations against terrorism. Unlike earlier emissaries, the American had traveled extensively around Kosovo. I said, let me first tell you what I saw in Milishevo. I saw men in Serb uniforms putting television sets and other consumer goods into a trailer. I saw another man dressed in a Serb uniform with a can of, uh, of liquid, spreading it in a, uh, in a store and lighting it with a match. At that point, he became very agitated. He stood up and began pacing, thrusting his hands in his pockets and saying, it's unacceptable, it's unacceptable. Znali su da je izuzetno važno i imali su naredbu o tome da ni na kakav način ne smaju biti povređeni civili. Once again, Milosevic was maintaining a statesmanlike pose, while, with a nod and a wink, encouraging atrocities. This time, the procedure brought down on him the wrath of America. I felt that we had learned something from Bosnia and had learned the terrible mistake you make once you realize you have an intransigent situation to just keep talking and fiddling around the edges. And I, I, I felt we had to move in a hurry. I said to President Clinton that an intervention military dans un monde civilisé et organisé, nécessitait une, un feu vert, une demande ou au moins un accord du Conseil de sécurité des Nations Unies. Well, we'd still be there waiting if that were the case because of the distribution of power there. It was evident that uh, the Russians would veto a Security Council resolution and we would be paralyzed. And so what was the point of going down that road and finding that you had basically ended up in a blind alley. 
The United Nations, which could authorize the use of force, adjourned for the summer without doing so. Milosevic drew his own conclusions. Every dictator knows that uh, if you want to up the ante, August, when the diplomats are on the beaches and when even prime ministers take holidays, uh, is the best time to do it. Uh, and it's true that uh, at the end of July, as people left NATO headquarters, Milosevic started sweep operations. Serb forces had the KLA at their mercy. By mid-September, it was reported that 100,000 ethnic Albanians were hiding from the Serb police in the forests and hills of Kosovo. Russia now changed its policy. On the 23rd of September, it backed a UN resolution calling for a ceasefire in Kosovo and the return of refugees. But the resolution contained no threat of force. The very next day, NATO's defense ministers assembled by the seaside in Portugal. They came to discuss whether they could issue the threat which the UN had balked at. Los distintos países que intervinieron intervinieron de maneras diferentes unos de otros. They adjourned for lunch in crisis, split a dozen ways. When they returned, the Secretary General tried to rally them. Yo tomé la palabra y dije claramente que no podíamos salir de esa reunión sin tomar una decisión más sólida, más seria, que diera una clarísima señal a Milosevic de que las cosas no podían seguir allí. Y les dije una frase que luego fue recogida, como sigamos así, Milosevic seguirá tomando una ciudad o un pueblo cada día. La táctica de Milosevic, le dije en inglés, a village a day keeps NATO away. The graphic reminder that if they did not act, another village would be burnt tomorrow and the day after touched a nerve. But the defense ministers still had no legal basis to threaten force. What we needed to do there was to, to put in place some action to back up the United Nations resolution and to stop the horrors that were actually playing every half hour on the television that day in the hotel. I'd been holding the UN resolution, this list of demands on Milosevic. I suddenly thought, well, we have got a strategy here. And I said uh, in my opening intervention, there's the list of demands. He has got to withdraw the number of troops. He's got to stop the disproportionate violence. You know, he's, you know, he's got to do a whole variety of things laid down by the United Nations. If he doesn't do that, we know the United Nations cannot move, so NATO uh, will move. NATO will say, or else. And with this formula, which the Briten immer wieder in sehr eleganter, subtiler Weise eingebracht haben, uh, ist es am Ende dann auch gelungen, die Bedenken Frankreichs uh, zu beseitigen. Briten bauten die Brücke, über die wir dann gemeinsam gehen konnten. Just a few moments ago, the North Atlantic Council approved the issue of the act uh, warn for both a limited air option and a phased air campaign in Kosovo. The Secretary General's announcement meant NATO's war machine was primed. In Belgrade, Milosevic summoned his Supreme Defense Council. He faced a mutiny. Ja sam na to rekao da mi smo dosta toga uradili, ako treba još nešto da uradimo, da uradimo i da potpuno ispunemo rezoluciju, da to objavimo i da to, da tako kažem, bude naš osnovni politički stav. Ja sam Milošević upozoravao da će Zapad, ako se ne ispune odredbe rezolucije 1199, preduzeti mere da bombama reši problem. Imao sam utisak da takav ton nipošto nije odgovarao gospodinu Miloševiću, pošto je on, ja mislim, bio ušao u fazu u kojoj je sumnjičio spremnost Međunarodne zajednice i NATO pakta da realizuju svoje ratne prijetnje Savjeznoj revoluciji Jugoslavije. Miloševićevi komentari su 
pa šta, dogodit će se bombardovanje, pa posle toga će opet biti mir, bit će bombardovanje pet ili sedam dana, nakon toga će se mobilisati međunarodna zajednica, na to pak će morati odustati od takve svoje namjere i mi ćemo onda biti moralni pobjednici. On je to negirao, ne verujući u to. Overruling his colleagues, Milosevic dismissed NATO as a paper tiger. In Brussels, America's special envoy asked the NATO Council for a show of force to convince Milosevic they meant business. Hello, Javier. I request an immediate activation order. Now, an activation order means that you turn the planes over to the Supreme Commander and let him uh, launch whenever he wants to. And it is the next to last step before the use of force. Einige Nationen waren bereit zuzustimmen, das war klar. Andere mussten Weisung einholen und so rannten sie an ihre Telefone und versuchten in der Nacht ihre Außenminister zu kriegen, weil der Generalsekretär ein weiteres Treffen noch in dieser Nacht angesetzt hatte. Wirklich zu meiner Überraschung hatten alle Nationen die Weisung der Activation Order zuzustimmen. The order gave Milosevic 96 hours to comply with all the demands in the UN resolution. We then moved B-52s forward from the United States to Britain. We put planes on the runway in Aviano, gassed up and ready to go. We moved uh, ships into the Adriatic, and we made sure that the world saw this. We were not bluffing. We were hours away from launch. Faced with the display of force, Milosevic caved in. Bila je uočljiva briga kod samog Miloševića, obzirom na potpuno jasnu, izraženu, neskrivenu pretnju da je bombardanje veoma blizu. Milosevic agreed to all the West's demands, including the withdrawal of some of his forces from Kosovo. Mi smo to naređenje ispoštovali, morali smo da ga ispoštujemo, jednostavno prepustili smo jedan deo teritorije Albancima. Što su oni iskoristili? Znači, oni nisu ispoštovali prekid vatre. We never asked the KLA to do anything. We never asked the KLA to sign anything. We simply informed them. The balance of power in Kosovo was about to shift. The international team appointed to monitor the ceasefire were powerless to stop them. We were possibly the only people in Kosovo that didn't have arms. But there we were between these two forces trying to keep them apart. They were heavily armed, they were willing to use those arms, and eventually we worried that they would maybe turn their arms on us, thinking that we had somehow were leaning in the opposite direction. Some of the monitors did lean, and mostly one way. <laughs> Lucheka se croyait très fortement aidée, notamment par les Américains, et elle était très vindicative. No, no, kemi mor, as ni her no isolim serios, se s kemi pas fuci, s kemi pas prejat mi najel, se s kemi pas. Mir po kemi muit mi ingat smu, se ja tam mi na sol mu neve. Što če kemi ingat smu, kroz se šmes najpev. Za ko je on, škada ne mi mringet ko, je što če nata je, drhinte sama špet. 
the Serbs rose to the bait. A village that had one KLA member would be subject to being surrounded by artillery, being surrounded by the army, being surrounded by the police, bombarded for hours. The police units would then go in, separate the men and the boys, take them off, and essentially pillage and loot and, and burn in the village. In early January 1999, the KLA shot dead three Serb policemen. The Serb response in the village of Ratchak would change everything. We had an event about one family from the village of Ratchak, which was responsible for the murder of three police officers. We had a decision from the previous command da pripremimo akciju za uništenje terorista koji su se tu nalazili. Mi smo u akciju krenuli u dva sata ujutru. Vreme je bilo vrlo hladno, zemlja je bila zaleđena, mrak je bio. Znali smo da u takvoj akciji Lavež pasa može da upropasti celu akciju. Na sreću, to malo što je ostalo, verovatno se zbog hladnoće sklonilo u neka toplija mesta. Mi smo se kretali kroz šumu i došli smo do njihovih rovova. Došlo je do kratke borbe u kojoj su naše jedinice uspele da likvidiraju te ljude koji su dežurali u rovovima. To je već bilo u osvit zore i došlo je do borbe. For six hours the paramilitary police fired into the village from one end while army units bombarded it from the other. Then the Major moved in with his police. Vojska Jugoslavije i jedan drugi deo policijskih snaga su krenuli sa druge strane sela da potiskuju terorista. The Serb force reported finding the bodies of 15 Albanian men in the village. The Serb Major says that after searching from house to house, he left a small unit to stand guard overnight. I u toku noći su oni napustili položaj. Iz kog razloga, to rečeno je da su se bili uplašili. When the head of the monitoring team arrived at work next morning, one of his deputies was waiting for him. I remember him saying, I'm sorry, sir, but I think something else has happened up there and it might be something pretty bad. So we drove down the highway to the village. By the time Ambassador Walker entered the village, some KLA men had returned. I was told that if you want to see what happened yesterday, you go up this ravine. We came on the first body. There was a little rug over, over the head. And as I walked up to it... He's going to be headed? That's affirmative over. I'm not sure if he was shot off or how it's off. Different pieces of skull. Jesus Christ. There was no head on this body. It was just the neck and... That's okay. I mean, let's give him the dignity of covering him up. As we walked up the ravine, we kept finding one body after another. All right, up to here is nine. <laughs> we then came on a pile of bodies in which, I don't know, there must have been 10 to 15 bodies all piled on top of each other. 
The Serb police claimed the dead were KLA members killed in the battle and that fellow KLA men had replaced their uniforms with peasant clothes to make them look like civilians. Ambassador Walker was sure he saw evidence to the contrary. I noticed blood-stained clothes where the bullets had entered and the blood stains were around the wound. I found it impossible to believe that the blood stains had somehow uh, been put in just the right place. <laughs> Walker decided to give the world his verdict. From what I personally saw, I do not hesitate to describe the event as a massacre, obviously a crime very much against humanity. I felt that what I had seen was a horror and that it was in fact perpetrated by the, by the security forces of, from Belgrade. This was the kind of hard evidence the Americans had been waiting for. For months, the Secretary of State had been urging her allies to use force against Milosevic. Now she seized her opportunity. It's terrible to think that something like a massacre can actually galvanize people to action. The truth is, something terrible happened, and the question then was what to do next. I made clear that I thought this justified an immediate military response. Now, the Europeans were not ready to do that. America's allies feared that Mrs. Albright wanted to bounce them into war. They needed a strategy of their own. France's president phoned London. J'ai dit à Tony Blair que le premier pas dans cette nouvelle stratégie, c'était la réunion du groupe de contact. Alors, pourquoi la réunion du groupe de contact? Tout simplement parce que dans le groupe de contact, il y avait la Russie. Jacques Chirac et moi étions tous très conscients du fait que les Russes, bien sûr, étaient dans une autre position parce qu'ils étaient proches des Serbes. Et donc, nous étions très anxieux de faire tout ce que nous pouvions faire par le groupe de contact. Et je savais parfaitement que Mme Albright, personne brillante, mais dont le caractère n'était pas toujours facile, était réservée à l'égard de la réunion du groupe de contact, parce qu'elle ne voulait pas siéger avec les Russes ou discuter avec les Russes. Et donc j'ai dit à Tony Blair que nous devions vaincre la, ré la, la réticence euh, de Madame Albright. The problem always was in the contact group meetings that the Western allies would say we can't do anything because the Russians won't move. And so I went to Moscow. In an attempt to outflank her European colleagues, she went straight to the Russian foreign minister. When we got together, we always tried to do something nice in addition to having the hard discussions. So he had invited me to the Bolshoi. It was really an amazing scene to sit in the Tsar's box with the uh, Russian foreign minister. and. The whole place was full of red velvet and uh, gold, and I had, I thought, a perfect outfit for this, which was also long velvet. People actually turned around to look at the two foreign ministers together. I decided to take a calculated risk to lay out our strategy that we would have to be prepared to use force. Uh, I think that Ivanov was quite surprised. And he, in turn, surprised her. Ivanov made clear that he was tired of dealing with the consequences of Milosevic's aggression. He was tired of having Russia appear always to defend Milosevic, that he agreed that if anything was ever going to work, it was going to require the use of force. But he told her quite candidly he could never say that publicly. Having that kind of assurance, we were in a position to issue some kind of an ultimatum. The French and British leaders were determined to prevent Mrs. Albright using the ultimatum as a shortcut to war. They wanted to use it to force Milosevic to change his policy in Kosovo. Tony Blair was uh, invited to dinner at Downing Street. 
Et je lui ai dit, ben, je serais très content d'embrasser Cheryl et, et les enfants. Donc, nous sommes allés dans la partie de son appartement. It was a really informal evening, and it was very important that because it was just at that crucial moment when we had to be on the same wavelength. Alors, j'ai dit à Tony Blair que il fallait faire une dernière tentative de nature politique par les Européens, qui étaient les premiers responsables de la situation dans cette partie de l'Europe. The consequence of these threats is so serious in terms of the military action. For goodness' sake, let's give it another try with the political processes. Stick the people together, you know, get all the pressure we can on both sides to come around the table and try and sort it out. The president and prime minister agreed that the Europeans must take the Milosevic crisis in hand. They decided to ask Serbs and Albanians to a conference, which the British and French foreign ministers would chair. We took the view that if we could get both sides together, as it happened at Dayton, and make sure that they were obliged to confront each other and to confront these difficult questions, we might achieve the breakthrough. They invited the parties to the Chateau of Rambouillet, 30 miles from Paris, which Louis XVI had used as his hunting lodge. But who would turn up? The Kosovar Albanian delegation arrived, among them a poet, a newspaper editor, and seven men from the KLA. But as the delegates assembled for the French president's welcoming address, there was someone missing from the Serb delegation, Slobodan Milosevic. When the invitation reached Belgrade, he had consulted a few close colleagues. By sending the president of Serbia as his stand-in, Milosevic left himself room for maneuver. But soon after the conference began, the Serbs learned that the Western leaders insisted any settlement must be policed by NATO troops. Da trupe NATO mogu bez ikakve restrikcije ići kroz celu teritoriju Jugoslavije, da mogu bez naknade ulaziti, izlaziti, bez carine, bez pregleda, bez sudske odgovornosti, da mogu bez naknade koristiti sve naše vojne kapacitete i tako dalje i tako dalje. I naravno ja sam reagovao da taj deo sporazuma je za nas na takav način neprihvatljiv. That evening, as the American negotiator briefed his Secretary of State in her suite, he received a note. I got a message that Milutinovic wanted to meet with me in the Bristol Hotel, in the piano bar. Normalno je da na takvim konferencijama mora ostati jedan istorijski trag. Pijano baru znate kako svira muzika pa sve je lakše. The Serb wanted privacy to pursue Milosevic's pet idea. Ever since he had lunched with world leaders in Paris, he had harbored a secret ambition. Now it was revealed. Ja sam rekao, Chris, najbolje budem u NATO. I said, Milan, I think you've misunderstood something, but go on. Sam to bio vrlo precizan. Ali da to bude normalan ugovor kao što imate sa drugim zemljama, NATO zemljama, komercijalni ugovor. Milan, we don't have years. We're talking weeks, we're talking days. This has got to move ahead. Hilje je imao više jedan stav otprilike Ma Milane, pa što ste zapili toliko za tim kosom? Pa to je jedna crna rupa, šta će vam to? Bolje se oslobodite te bed. I said, Milan, I'm telling you, there is a point at which we could find NATO in action against your country. 
u redu, evo ja vam predlažem ovo oko NATO, a ako vi mislite da treba još nešto da razgovarate, razgovarajte sa gospodinom Miloševićem. It was Mrs. Albright who called Belgrade. I placed a call to Milosevic and I explained to him what the stakes were and once again uh, I did your fork in the road and you have an option to come back and be a part of Europe. This is a very serious time. Uh, you need to consider what's been offered here. Bezbednostnih snaga ujedinjenih nacija da koriste sve puteve, luke, aerodrome i teritoriju bez ikakvih ograničenja što je značilo praktično okupaciju zemlje. Mrs. Albright got the rebuff she expected. She put more effort into winning over the Kosovo Albanian delegation. She needed them to sign up to the contact group's terms or she would never win approval for action against Milosevic. She focused her attention on the young KLA man who had become delegation leader, Hashim Thachi. He presented his perspective about democracy and multi-ethnic cultures and um, seemed to be wise beyond his years and acted like a leader. You know, he looks like a leader. He's a very tall, handsome young man, uh, quite urbane looking. Takim je cekje shumë ndoras, në filimi është të programuar për 5 minuta, zjatë e rrëth 25 minuta gjysëmore, në diskutua më rëdë mësë dëshmejnë e zilljes politike, Mrs. Albright was confident that she would accept the terms on offer, even though they promised Kosovo only autonomy within Serbia, not the independence the KLA was fighting for. But she didn't realize the pressure the KLA leader was under from home. The KLA were demanding a referendum on independence, certain that the Albanian majority would vote for it. After two weeks of hard bargaining, the foreign ministers arrived for the final session. They summoned each delegation in turn. The foreign ministers all sat at a, at a long table uh, as if we were in judgment or something. And first uh, Thachi was brought in with a couple of other members of the Albanian delegation. The question was basically, do you agree with the framework, yes or no? And we were expecting a yes, or I was. We needed further improvements, and of course the improvements we wanted were ones that we knew were unnegotiable, they were impossible to get agreement on. And eventually I had to say to him, look, the real, the bottom line here, the real question is, can you say yes to this package? Io dissi che su questo ci voleva come Robin Cook, ci voleva una risposta chiara, chiara e netta, che era sì o era no. Le dia se poi ci se ne temi io che ti documenti, ne do ta un business per te ti andar contare, problemi con Soves do te citei ne Harris, che problemi do te Kurdizoi. He kept kind of moving around the issue, and when he wouldn't say yes, I remember taking out my earphones, just putting them down on the table in just pure exasperation. She didn't like, uh, in particular, la mia insistenza di conoscere esattamente qual era la posizione kosovara. I thought that the way that the language had been constructed provided what in diplomacy we call some creative ambiguity.
E io ho detto, certamente una certa ambiguità nella fraseologia che si mette negli accordi è necessaria, ma qui si, eh, qui si decideva se bombardare o non bombardare la Serbia, che era una decisione di una tale importanza che dovevamo essere assolutamente certi che la responsabilità del mancato accordo era della Serbia e che non era dei Kosovari. And Dini got more and more insistent and said, are you willing to give up independence? You see, this is what I told you. You see, I told you so. Madeleine Albright s'est montrée à la fois surprise et très préoccupée. Elle a demandé une suspension de séance. Nous avons suspendu la séance, on a discuté, tout le monde a parlé à tout le monde. Okay. Ma c'era grande nervosismo nella delegazione americana perché la strategia che, aveva, che gli americani avevano eh, portato avanti e sviluppato era fallita. For the cameras, Mrs. Albright stuck to her usual line. The Serb delegation bears the lion's share of responsibility for the difficulties we have experienced today. But in private, with Hashim Thachi, she took a different tack. I said, look, I don't understand what just happened in there. You have let us down. Uh, it is an impossible situation now. How could you do this? We expected you to be a leader. Dona Albright had declared that the process was not in the way. The Serbs were not in the way, and they were not in the way. They were not in the way. Ju nuk nëshkruni, sërbet e pranojnë, ne kemi duart e lidhura. You could see that he was just shocked. I mean, he looked like a high school student that I had dressed down. Edhe të nesër men, është është rritur presioni që të prenojnë atë dokument pa referendum. The Kosovo Albanians were given three more days. They wanted to sign, but they were still under pressure from the gunmen back home. For 72 hours, they did not leave the castle or go to bed. As the deadline approached, the delegation was still arguing. Then the American negotiator went to their room. I said, guys, we're there now. We've got five minutes now to really decide this thing. The Chris Hilli Mriti, Hitteri, Dersitur, Kravata e, e, e hapur s'kishte fjet aqsa disa prindesh. I said, so are you going to sign this thing or are you not? At that point, Saroy spoke up. Këto dy javë, tri javë po i kalim negociata. Këto dhe dy vjetë po i kalim konflikt me Miloševic. Edhe po vjen një moment, i vetëmi moment, kur krejt këto po mundemi me gjujt, edhe jemi të gjujt. Edhe, për mu ka qenë sekondat të cilat ne po e gjujmë krejt, krejt mundin ton, vetëm se nuk mund të gjejmë një formulim shumë të thjesht. Vetën Saroj had a brainwave. The document they were being asked to sign said, in three years an international meeting would consider a final settlement for Kosovo and the will of the people would be taken into account. Saroy suggested they could sign it if Mrs. Albright accepted a letter stating that the will of the people would be tested in a referendum. Pra, faktikisht, e qilni mderëm për një lojë referendumi politik, por një kosisht, i thoshim bashkësis në dërkomtare se saj përket nesh puna me këtë dokument ka përfunduar. Thatchi was trying to read the draft on his translator's computer screen. And I have Jim O'Brien and Jamie Rubin behind, telling me, hurry up, man, hurry up. He can read it later. And Hashim was saying, well, maybe you could change that. And I said, no, no, you can't change. And I began to step in front of him and sort of bump him back away from the computer. I want it done. And Thachi becomes tremendously nervous. He says, you're not leaving this chair until I get both wordings in both languages. <laughs> O'Brien just takes a sheet of paper knowing that if 
the paper remains a few more minutes in Fauci's possession, he would probably change his mind. I said, Jamie, here's a copy. You're going to announce this. I thought that I better first check with the Secretary of State. And I uh, snuck into the conference room and whispered in her ear what had happened. And she said, go out and announce it. The letter was addressed to Mrs. Albright, so she was able to accept the referendum compromise without consulting her colleagues. Then I really started to get my blood pumping, and I began running through the halls of this crazy castle and out through the gates and into the town square to finally tell the reporters something good. Very briefly, the Coast Guard Albanian delegation has voted in favor of this agreement, pending consultations with the people of Kosovo. The Albanians had chosen peace and uh, deferred independence, and the Serbs had not, and now there was clarity that uh, the world needed in deciding whose side they should be on. With a referendum in the bag, Thatchy won over the commanders back home. The delegation returned to Paris for the signing ceremony. <laughs> Milosevic stayed home, claiming foul play. What was uh, tried to be imposed in Rambouillet was not autonomy at all. That was independence. And I really don't believe, if you, if you show it to any honest American, that there is one single honest American who will tell you that if they were on the place of our delegation, could sign that. Serbia's parliament duly backed Milosevic's rejection of the Rambouillet terms, as did the Serb public. Serbia's deputy prime minister revealed what Milosevic was planning to do next. <laughs> Mi Serbi ćemo prilično stradati, ali Albanaca na Kosovu neće biti. Nationalism had brought Milosevic to power. Now it threatened to bring about his downfall. Milosevic had already launched two wars against Croatia and Bosnia to secure his vision of a Yugoslavia dominated by Serbs. Now, in March 1999, his forces were terrorizing Kosovo, part of his own country, where the majority of the people were ethnic Albanians. As his forces intensified their third campaign of ethnic cleansing, the Western powers united against him. They issued an ultimatum. Milosevic was required to give Kosovo, a province of Serbia, self-government under the protection of NATO troops. As the deadline approached, the chairman of the European Union went to talk him round. I have then again with him under four eyes spoken. I have him constantly begged to understand that this to a war with the USA. I have him said that it is madness what he does. Yugoslavia and Serbia in a war with the USA to führen. I have him said that Deutschland es zweimal gemacht hat und äh, es war zweimal ein Riesendesaster, dass wir es, äh, er das doch aus der Geschichte lernen soll. We are defending ourselves. I think we are defending right to be free and to be independent and right to live in peace. Er hat mir damals zu verstehen gegeben, ähm, dass er diese westlichen Politiker alle nicht ernst nimmt. The last effort was made by America's special envoy. I was asked to go back and to give Milosevic a very clear message that if he didn't accept the Rambouillet agreements, we would bomb. He spelled out what would happen in a meeting with President Milosevic and his number two, 
the president of Serbia. He was in the show with Milošević and told him that the rockets were so precise that he could have hit the stand and that we didn't have anything to do with it, and so on. Milošević looked almost disinterested in it, sort of um, moving his head to the side, just kind of shaking his head in, in, in disgust. He said, well, that's nothing I can do. I'm not going to sign. Ambassador Holbrook walked out of the room, was walking across the large reception area, and he just flashed a thumbs down and shook his head. Naravno, ovaj, ja sam ga ispratio i, i zamolio obrajena, odnosno moj stafa. Ja vidim kad će biti da znam da se sklonim. Ovaj. Las noticias que yo recibía de las conversaciones con, eh, con Dick eh, eran muy negativas y decidimos eh, en el Consejo Atlántico prepararnos para lo peor. Me pidieron que hablara con los, todos los países. I was in the White House when he called. I felt very strongly that we had to move quickly. We couldn't have another Bosnia where the uh, international community and Europe and NATO in particular kind of fiddled around for two and a half years. Y por lo tanto, la pregunta que yo formulé es si, de acuerdo con usted o con su gobierno, cree usted que hay una base legal. I said yes, and when I authorized the use of force, I said emphatically yes. Are you ready to go with us, Tony? And I said yes, without hesitation. Ils étaient tous mis d'accord. C'est Milosevic qui a refusé. À partir de là, les choses étaient jouées. The squadron commander pulled the entire squadron into the briefing room. Pilots, maintenance professionals, everybody in the squadron pulled them together and said, boys, we're going to war. Everybody was talking three days. And all the pilots were telling me, you got to get me in, you got to get me in, because uh, I need to go, uh, I want to go, and uh, bomb before the war is over. The first night, we didn't get a knockout blow on the Serb air defense. It didn't come up. We shot down three MiGs. The second night, we didn't get any MiGs, and they also didn't bring up the air defense. So we began to realize we had trouble. The third night, there was bad weather. The fourth night was a Saturday night we lost an F-117 and all the missions got scrubbed. So it was pretty clear by Sunday and Monday that we weren't going to get a knockout blow. What made matters worse was the reaction of Serbia's traditional ally, Russia. Hardliners in Moscow were trying to use popular support for the Serbs to undermine their government's pro-Western policies. Во-первых, когда были митинги протеста напротив американского посольства, я подъезжал туда. Правда, был в гражданской форме, и я восхищался нашими молодыми ребятами, студентами прежде всего, которые агрессию оценивают именно как агрессию. Only two hours before the bombing had begun, President Clinton had phoned to inform the ailing President Yeltsin that NATO was about to take unilateral action. I said that we are working on both sides from the point of view of safety, from the point of view of weapons, and now everything will go to the market. 
and I argued to him, you know, we actually took a lot of heat off of Russia by having NATO do this. I went through all the steps that the warnings Milosevic had been given, the opportunities that we had that were blown to avoid any kind of conflict in Kosovo months before it actually materialized. President said, no, I'm not going to talk to him. It was a good feeling for the one man who thought he could talk Yeltsin round was the French president. I have a lot of esteem and amity for Boris Yeltsin. So when I called him, he exploded. And the president Yeltsin expressed in a voice of anger, literally and in Russian, and the president of the Republic had no need to have the same thing Ну, короче говоря, грубейшая ошибка американцев и американской дипломатии и Клинтона. Грубейшая ошибка. Президент наш тогда вообще обвинил Шираков в том, что он является едва ли, едва ли не пособником, и ему придется отвечать перед международным трибуналом. Мы прекратили отношения с НАТО. Вы знаете, были подготовлены, и затем вышли наши разведывательные корабли в район конфликта. По военной линии были приведены в состояние более высокой боевой готовности. The Serb army were doing quite well on their own. They had mastered some of the techniques needed to outwit NATO's airmen. Знали смо да они располагаат координатама, да се да се они тој скористи и да првите ракети кои крену према нашој земја да се идју прво на тие цели. Дакле, ми смо тоа изместили. The object is, as you know, not destroyed, but it was not destroyed by the army or the weapons. The Serbs had more tricks up their sleeves. As we know, they have intelligent bombs, which react on the cold air, on the metals, and on the metals. We are using them достигнуваше нашите института, тие дрвени макети премазивали посебни хемикали ма кои се одавале од сија метала, а имитирали се радарски извори за рачења. Другите ракети кои се биле специјално наменени за уништување радарски система и радарски послуги, у суштини вредни по милион, два милиона долара, погаѓале уредаје кои не се вредни, коштали више од педесет. The West had gone to war to prevent a humanitarian catastrophe. Milosevic's forces responded by stepping up their campaign to drive the Kosovo Albanians out. But tu je najvažnije bilo za što kraće vreme neutralisati pre svega šiptarske turiške snage i ne dozvoliti da to preraste u masovno oružno pokušaj. A week into the war, the Serb special police reached the area of Milishevo. Bali Thaci taught science in a local school there. In nine months, his family had been forced to move home five times. Fearing that the approaching Serbs would kill the able-bodied men, Thaci hid in the forest, leaving his wife and children with the family car. <laughs> Pasiče mor ne fali informacije vogel centar hik forsat sirben gaj opjec a teru da terum četra froha me desim me frig ponga a jo se doje te dišem diška se škaka ndo me familje tona. He had hidden his video camera under a barrel outside a friend's house. Now he returned to collect it. Por kesto ni zet minuta di konci se nkrej forsat sirben gaj oštepia. With his camera, Bali made a unique record of Serb ethnic cleansing. 
Next, he made for the place where he was told the Serbs had caught up with the people fleeing from his village. Five men among the fleeing villagers had been killed on the spot. And Bali found his family's red Volkswagen Golf abandoned. Milosevic's police were still combing the area. To avoid them, he took the long way round to the village. Murat Ruk, who they can offer three or come back with him, Pashku Derite, Vandin Jarius. Kuru, you are from Vandit Jarius. Massacre set to offer shot at Borim, Takovan shocked him in Bayram, in Bayram Marine. Look this time, or toy, Nitas, you go strategy, you go comedy, most of the Kamontian comedy, you comedy. Among the mutilated corpses, Bali's friend had found his own brother. It was too much for him. At the site of this massacre, Bali filmed 36 bodies. Among them was his uncle. E kom gjeru dojen, po nuk e kom njoft. E kom gjeru, po se kom njoft, që është taj doja im. Nga jo se qëka i këshën bërë, këshën qa, pyytin shtu e këshën zirë. Atë, nga pëshirin, që ma si kërujë e kanë marrë trofej me vete, me që atje më mburë në Sërbis. Ending the catastrophe that had struck people like these was NATO's war aim. But its targets in the first phase of the bombing were not the police units who were to blame. They were Serb air defense installations and only enough of them for a three-day war. All the target sets that were given had been hit. So there weren't any approved targets to go hit anymore unless we went out there and struck the same targets again, which in fact is what we did. We just turned basically bigger rocks into smaller rocks. The NATO commander had a problem. To enlarge the range of targets he could attack, he needed approval from all 19 NATO countries. 
después me, 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 me decía, me insistía que era necesario pasar a bombardear algunos eh, edificios que tuvieran valor simbólico o valor psicológico para Milosevic y de esa manera intentar romper su, 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 el, eh, su espina dorsal desde el punto de vista psicológico. We had to strike at the Serb means of transportation, including their, their highway network, their rail network, their tunnels, and so forth. And especially the highly significant bridges over the Danube River. Y yo le dije, Wes, esto va a ser muy difícil. Eh, varios ministros y varios jefes de gobierno, como sabes, eh, les va a costar mucho aceptar que tomar esta decisión. They both knew who he meant. Clark quería absolutamente destruir todos los puentes de, de Belgrado, lo que era evidentemente absurdo y no del todo necesario en el cadre de la misión que era la nuestra. President Chirac left for his Easter break, but President Clinton tracked him down. Je passais en effet deux ou trois jours dans un chalet en montagne et qu'il avait fait venir deux ou trois techniciens euh, américains pour organiser euh, une conversation protégée et ça n'a pas marché. Et... Bref, on a fini par prendre le téléphone ordinaire President Chirac said quite understandably that if you, if you hit them where they live, if you sort of try to break down the economic infrastructure of uh, Belgrade and with it Serbia, uh, after all these sanctions, you'll just make them more angry. Je considérais que cela ne servait à rien, que cela consistait à punir les Serbes et que cela ne servait à rien pour détruire le régime de Milosevic. I disagreed to the extent that I, I said, look, I think this bombing campaign can work, but we have to be able to have enough muscle to have impact. Je lui dis qu'il me semblait que notre objectif, ce n'était pas de faire la guerre au sens traditionnel du terme, c'était d'anéantir les capacités de commandement de Milosevic Chirac's words gave Clinton an opening. They agreed NATO could bomb targets related to Milosevic's command capability in Belgrade. The operation is very specific, very concrete, about some edifices that could have that value symbolic about Milosevic. Here's the two targets. It's the Serb Ministerial Specialist Police. Here's the Yugoslav Ministerial Specialist Police. Both headquarters are in Belgrade. Both are involved in directing the ethnic cleansing. I want to strike both of them. I mi smo čuli sirene. I onda sam čuo sa tranzistora taj glas. Građani dolaze avioni, napašće vas, isključite struju, otvorite prozore, idite u najbliže sklonište. I sećam se mi smo odjedno mi bio tajac. I niko od nas nije znao šta će napasti avion. Ko će da pogine? strikes were effective, they were precise, there were no civilian injuries, there were no collateral damages, and uh, it sent a resounding signal of NATO's resolve. That same night, the 11th of the war, NATO sidestepped the French veto. General Clark bombed two bridges across the Danube, but not in Belgrade. Chirac's prediction came true. The bombing rallied the Serbs behind Milosevic. Targets became the latest Belgrade fashion accessory. Obrana Mostova je naša ideja. Onda smo mi se dogovorili da svake večeri naši članovi, aktivisti i simpatizeri budu na Mostovima. I tako smo se rasporedili da je svake večeri jedna grupa ljudi bila na jednom od trih mostova. 
Naravno, onda su počeli da se tome priključuju i drugi. Znam da su svi protiv Srbije, ali Srbima to zlogrdilo je. Znam da postoji dogovor s nebom, ko tebe kamenom, ti njega hlebom, ali dotle tako, ali dotle tako. Even Belgrade's westernized sophisticates who watched the BBC on satellite, fell in behind Milosevic. <laughs> Milosevic too dismissed the plight of the refugees. You are right, there are a lot of refugees, but they are a result of bombing. And they are not only Albanians. Everybody is running away because of bombing. Serbs, Turks, Gypsy, Muslims, deers are running, birds are running. Everybody is running away because of bombing. Bees are running. President Milosevic gave no other televised interview during the war. He spent most of his time inside his palatial compound in a suburb of Belgrade. He neither visited the wounded nor toured areas hit by bombs. From these grand rooms he directed the campaign against the Kosovo Albanians and against his political enemies at home. At that time, I was in Beograd and changed my place. Then I got the information that there was a formula in the country with the intention to kill a few people and that we were in the two first places, I and Slavko Čuruvija. Ten days into the war, the two men at the top of the hit list met in central Belgrade. At the evening, it was maybe 11 hours, it was sunny, and everything was completely empty. It was like kao da je izumro, kao da je kuga u Beogradu. Bili su jedno 20 ili 30 stolova postavljeni sa stonjacima, peljarama, ali nije bilo nijednog gosta. The man he was meeting was newspaper owner Slavko Čuruvija. His paper, The Telegraph, had been closed down by the regime and its offices ransacked after he waged a campaign against Milosevic's new censorship law. Previously, he had counted Milosevic's wife as a valued contact. When I met her last time, on a day when they passed that crazy and unconstitutional law, I said, look, Mira, this is very bad. This is dictatorship. She said, we should have done it three years ago. In the deserted cafe, the publisher, the opposition leader and their wives compared notes. Tako da su raspravljali koje mogućnosti njih dvojica imaju da te opasne situacije izbegnu. Slavko ga u jednom trenutku pitao, jeli, a šta ćeš ti da uradiš? On rekao, meni su čak iz porodice Miloševića savjetovali but he stayed in Belgrade. The next weekend, he and his wife went out for Sunday lunch. We decided to go to the house. You can't sit in the house. And then we went to the Dunav Skokeja, to the Kalemegdan, to the Svete Petke. 
Ще би ускърспили суверници по църкви. И при излъзко из Калемегдана вече е било негде близо четири по-подне. Кад смо се врачали в кучи и прошли пролаз. Нека тут ня вина. Дешава. Он је пао и испустио ми руку. Я сам се полу окренула. И на еден пут видела неког младог човека обученог у црно. Црно дело, црна капа, бело, бледо, лице, безлично. Ovo je drugi je prišao mi s leđa i udario me pištoljem u glavu. Ja sam pala kod Slavka i tek onda sam čula pucnje. I dok sam ležala do njega, ovaj je prišao i pucao mu je u glavu. Several hundred attended Churuvia's funeral, including the man whose name was next on the hit list. Onda sam otišao kući da spakujem stvari i došao mi jedan komšija, to je bilo dva ili tri ujutru, došao mi, pozvonio mi neko na vrata, ja sam otvorio, bio jedan komšija koji je mi rekao, ja sam šetam psa po parku i park je pun ljudi koji razgovaraju na motorolama, civilu, u svakom grmu je pojedano i dvojica. I to je bio znak da je posljednji trenutak. Taj dan na sahranu smo pripremili plan do odlaska za Crnu Goru, kolima. Na granici Crne Gore su znali ovi crnogorski da treba ja da prođem i oni nas nisu zaustavljali. Mi smo prošli naprosto kroz tu, nismo se zaustavljali. The Republic of Montenegro was Serbia's junior partner in the Yugoslav Federation. Bezbjeđen je jedan bezbjedan transfer gospodina Đinđića iz Beograda i obezbjeđeno je sve ono što mu je ovdje omogućavalo potpunu zaštitu i omogućavalo da može organizovati kako tako normalan život. Milo Đukanović had become president of Montenegro by opposing Milosevic. He tried to stay out of Milosevic's conflict with NATO. President Dukanovic clearly was not very keen on being bombed in the same way as we were bombing Belgrade and parts of Kosovo. You can see why. He was not in sympathy with Milosevic at all, but it was necessary uh, to take out some of the air defense capabilities of Yugoslavia that were based in Montenegro. The military of l'OTAN wanted to bombard Montenegro. I didn't want it. J'ai donc dit à Bill Clinton, j'ai appelé Bill Clinton pour lui dire que bombarder le Monténégro, c'était en réalité faire le jeu de Milosevic en affaiblissant le président Djukanovic. Le président a dit à Chirac que nous n'avions pas le choix, qu'il y avait trop de risques pour nos pilotes et nos pilotes et nos militaires de donner un sanctuaire à les forces qui utilisaient le Monténégro comme base. Nous devons regarder les targets. Si nous pouvons hit les targets avec a high level of certainty that we're not going after civilians, but that will go to the heart of what they're doing, then we ought not to rule any targets off the list. Chirac backed down on condition that the bombing of Montenegro was restricted to limited strikes on Serb military targets. Soon after, NATO launched a huge bombing raid. The French president demanded an explanation. Le président Clinton avait, semble-t-il, des informations selon lesquelles le président Djukanovic lui-même souhaitait des bombardements pour se débarrasser d'éléments favorables à Milosevic. Je lui dis, ça m'étonnerait beaucoup, mais je vais le vérifier. Finalement, j'ai réussi à le joindre sur son portable. 
Gospodin Širak provjerava tačnost nekih navoda sa kojima je on valjda raspolagao. Međutim, moj odgovor na to je bio potpuno eksplicitan. Svaka bomba koja je tih dana pala na teritoriju Crne Gore je zapravo prijetila da ozbiljno potkopa poziciju vlasti u Crnoj Gori. I dok želi je konfirmirati to, a Bill Clinton i sveta fera je te rekli. Soon after, NATO raids on Montenegro were stopped. Serbia's leaders were more single-minded in selecting targets. A month into the war, more than half a million Kosovars, a third of the population, had been driven from their homes. Ja sam se nagledao mnogo žena koje su nosile male bebe u naručju i išle peške po velikim vrućinom. Meni je strašno bilo krivo, meni su suze išle. Ja sam plakao. I stalno sam govorio, ovo srpskom vojniku nikad nije trebalo, ovo srpska vojska nikad nije radila, ovo je velika sramota za nas. Amongst those on the roads was Bali Thaci, searching for his family. Kërë kërë më afro vendit aty, ku kam lënë familjen time, në shpatë kështu kom pa atje në lugë, qdo gjo e heshtur, qdo gjo e djegun për rrë, asë njeri në kom pa. In fact, his wife, Elmira, who was nine months pregnant, had fled with their three children. She was as afraid for her husband as he was for her. Kërë 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 Flokte që i ka hi krejt, se dhe u kalë ke dhe dy të rja, ka dy fshatra në nina për pjetë, e kërë e traktura krejt që i këshin pas një flokën. Ta dhe për ti të shinë të mija babi a me të tje. Before leaving, the women prepared for the worst. Unë e shkova në kërë, thash me marë dishka, për më dukë pak si ma e vjetër, Kom vesh dy vinjaka kështu, se ato bash që ato shka ishin shtatë zona, që ato si ma treja, që ato i malë tretë ishin ma tepër. The police caught the fleeing villages in this clearing and marched them off at gunpoint. Kem shkjel në për gjak, unë e vetë edhe vjira dhe në shka e nakona, kem shkjel në për gjak gjenve. They were herded onto buses and driven into the mountains towards Albania. Stumbling and in pain, they reached the border. They made it to Albania, and Elmia gave birth to a girl. But she was born with suspected brain damage due to malnutrition. A lot of people who were opposed to any action in uh, Kosovo and against Serbia were saying, you guys have caused this. So we were getting huge heat and pressure on that. Is the Prime Minister aware that the absolute human calamity that we see on our screens every day has got much worse since the bombing began. The death and destruction is being wrought by Milosevic on yeah. innocent Kosovo Albanian people. He is the person who began this policy of ethnic cleansing. We are trying to put a stop to it. Stopping ethnic cleansing from 15,000 feet was not easy, 
Even with the most accurate targeting technology mankind had ever used, mistakes did happen. Three weeks into the war, foreign journalists who had been restricted to Belgrade were shepherded to Kosovo to witness a terrible scene. NATO, fascists were hit by bombardment, the colonel, the soldiers who were fighting, and at that time, they killed the soldiers and destroyed the soldiers. They killed the soldiers. They killed the soldiers. NATO had mistaken the column of Kosovo Albanian refugees for a Serb army convoy. When all the bodies were discovered, the number of dead was 73. Can you deny that NATO was responsible for the, the incident uh, or incidents which are being shown on Serbian television and to which Western correspondents were invited to go and look at, at headless bodies and so on, which appeared to have occurred on the road between Jakovica and prison? Is, is that, can you deny that? Doug, that I have no indication at the present time that NATO was responsible for any... But was it the one that is being shown on, for which you are being blamed? Protests against the bombing campaign spread across Europe. Milosevic turned the screw. When our soldiers are dying, they know why they are dying. They are dying for their homeland, for their fatherland. And for what will die your soldiers? 5,000 miles from home, killing children until they sleep killing women and girls and peaceful citizens and ruining what we were building through the decades after Second World War. In London, the Prime Minister phoned President Clinton. I said to him, look, we're losing this. We're losing the propaganda battle. I mean, we're losing it big time. Bill, this is like, you know, you and I are familiar with this. this is like fighting a political campaign. You've got to have a proper, you know, press war room, propaganda war room, where you're putting out the correct information, you're correcting the lies of your opponents, you're setting the agenda. He took his press advisor to NATO headquarters in Brussels to improve the press operation there. For me at that point, it was a very low point in one sense, but in another sense, I was absolutely determined then that we see this thing through. The Prime Minister went off to meet the general running the war. I brought Prime Minister Blair into the office. We had a one-on-one -on -one scheduled, and he sat down on the sofa, and I said, well, can I get you a cup of tea or coffee or something? He said, no. I said, I've got a briefing here. He said, let me ask you a question. I thought I might as well just come to the point, because it wasn't going well from the outside. So I said to him, are we going to win this thing? Nobody had asked this question. Not of me. And I said, Prime Minister, I've never lost anything significant in my life, and we're not going to lose this one. Well, are we going to do it by air power alone? To which he said, well, we can't be sure of that. He said, because the future of every government and leader, or almost every government leader in Western Europe depends on this. I then said to him, well, let's, you know, <laughs> let's cut straight to the point. Are we going to need ground troops? We might. Well, if that's the case, then we better start preparing for that. For that, Prime Minister, I'll probably have to depend on you. Prime Minister, thank you so much for coming. If ground troops were needed, Tony Blair would have to bring about a sea change in the thinking of all NATO governments. A month into the war, NATO held its 50th birthday party. President Clinton was the host. The last thing he wanted was a violent public clash amongst his fellow NATO leaders, some of whom feared that backing a ground war could bring down their governments. Noi, il governo italiano, rese noto 
sia al Presidente Clinton e io ai membri del gruppo di contatto che il governo italiano non avrebbe mai accettato l'invio di una forza di terra nel Kosovo. Deutschland, eh, und zwar nicht nur wegen Rot-Grün, sondern die Stimmung im Lande war so, dass es auch für eine andere Konstellation sehr schwer geworden wäre. Die Stimmung in Deutschland insgesamt war sehr, sehr schwierig. Und das hängt mit unserer historischen Erfahrung zusammen. Äh, vor allem die ältere Generation, die den Krieg noch erlebt hat. Für Tony Blair, the only hope of persuading them all to back the ground troops option was to win over Bill Clinton. I was worried that the people in the Congress who did not support what I was doing, most of whom were Republicans, and uh, not in my party, and not subject to my persuasion, would actually uh, more vocally oppose our involvement and try to stop, pass some resolution to say no ground troops can go. Blair had come to Washington two days before the summit to bend the president's ear. When they arrived at the, uh, at the White House, we all gathered. It was a fairly small group of, of Blair's uh, very closest advisors and, uh, and just a handful of us uh, with the president. To avoid a direct disagreement with the prime minister, the president had his national security advisor speak for him. He argued that they must not raise the ground troops issue at the summit meeting. We had some very uh, shaky reads uh, uh, at that stage. Uh, leaders under enormous uh, pressure uh, to try to end this. Uh, it was not the place to show Milosevic that we were divided. There was only one way Slobodan Milosevic could win this war, and that was to break the unity of the alliance. I said, look, this will be a shorter campaign if he knows we have the total will to win. If he believes that we're prepared to use ground troops to do whatever it takes to make him back down, then he is going to back down quickly. From the air, we had a thousand to one advantage. And it was a matter of time until we wore down Milosevic. Once we had 100,000 or 200,000 troops on the ground uh, in Serbia, in those mountains, um, it was not a hundred to one or a thousand to one advantage. Sandy's point was, look, you know, it's all very well for you guys, but it's the Americans who are gonna have to provide a lot of the hardware for this and, and troops themselves. It was clear the ground troops issue could not be settled by committee. Bill Clinton said to me, well, look, why don't we just go up to my study and have a talk about it all? And I said to him, are we prepared to lose? First of all, I told him that I was quite sure it would lead to a deep division in America at this time. One that I was fully willing to absorb if necessary, but that I didn't think that we needed the ground troops to win. You may not need to use them, but you do need to threaten to use them. We came up with this language that said, we're gonna do whatever it takes to win. Whatever it takes to win, a phrase high on determination but low on specifics, was a slogan they could all unite behind. They took that message into the NATO meeting the next day. 19 leaders seated around a table, not in a conference call, not in a cable, not to their foreign ministers, looking at each other in the eye and essentially making a personal commitment to each other that NATO will not lose. We in Russia were that there will be, at least, a certain amount of unfortunately, or even active participation in this action. If NATO did go on to defeat Russia's ally, Yeltsin's government would be in peril. He used a television appearance to announce a surprise initiative. We are going to be able 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 to be to the final speeches were being made 
uh, when we got word that President Yeltsin was on the line. We pulled the President out of the meeting. It was clear that uh, Yeltsin had something on his mind. And the single message that he wanted to try to get across and kept coming back to and back to was, Bill, we've got to fix this problem. We've got to fix this problem. He went on and on about it. You know, he was mad at Milosevic, too. I mean, he didn't, he, he had tried to talk sense to him and had certainly not wanted another round of ethnic cleansing. So Yeltsin said, you know, Bill, I want to, I want to work with you on this new diplomatic effort to, to bring about uh, an end to the war, but I need a bombing pause. I need to be able to show that Russia has in it some influence. My view was that Milosevic had to cry uncle first, that, you know, we may have to talk to him, but first of all, there had to be a clear, unambiguous defeat for the aggression forces in Kosovo. Он сказал, что я был очень возмущен и, 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 и страшно расстроен. Он действительно был страшно расстроен. Все-таки Ельцин человек концентричный, достаточно сильный, и он не очень часто получал нет. Though playing a weak hand, Yeltsin now planned a political masterstroke. To extend Russia's influence in the Balkans, he called in his former prime minister, who he knew was well trusted in the West. Помню, сам предложил, Александр что тебе не позаниматься каким-то отдельным вопросом? Я говорю, пожалуйста, я готов любыми отдельными поручениями, только без должности, без ничего. Пожалуйста, я готов. President Clinton also called on a trusted colleague. Thirty years earlier, Strobe Torbert and Bill Clinton, the one with the beard, had arrived in Oxford together. Now, Torbert was the president's Russian expert. Together, they set out the conditions the joint peace mission must impose on Milosevic. Those conditions are that uh, his forces have to get out of Kosovo. Uh, he's got to let uh, an international presence, which, by the way, is going to be led by NATO, into Kosovo, and the refugees have to come home. And until those conditions uh, are met, the bombing is going to continue. A week later, President Yeltsin's envoy arrived in Washington. Talbot presented him with the terms. По сути дела, предлагалась оккупация Косово. Мы с этим не могли согласиться. Agreeing peace terms to put to Milosevic would not be easy. But before the Russians and Americans could get down to work, events in Serbia intervened. That same week, over Serbia's third biggest city, Niš, NATO decided to use a controversial weapon. Cluster bombs had been ruled out by the NATO commander in Bosnia as too prone to kill people. But the current NATO commander had a different view. Cluster bomb units are the right munitions to go after certain targets, like in the case of Niche, what you had was the dispersion of the helicopter force and some of the aircraft outside the bounds of the airfield hangars. And the cluster bomb unit is the appropriate area weapon to use. It disperses explosives over a very large area. Liliana Spasic, a medical student, was in Niche on the day of the bombing, staying with her in-laws. I went to the pijac. In the last moment, Isnaja said, wait, I said, I will go to you, to go to the house. When we stigli blizu te ulice, the nas se otvorio taj padobran kako pa onda te sitne bombice. Vidim ljudi beže. To je palo. Baš u centar. Snaja se okrenula i samo je rekla jaoj mama. Ja sam nju zagrlila i rekla sam ne boj se. Nas dve smo se srušile. Within minutes, the mayor arrived at the scene.
U jednoj ulici je bilo pet leševa. Ljudi u panici, lokva krvi s jednog mesta gde su čoveka već spomenili. Ja onda sam zvala u pomoć. Ljudi u pomoć, spasite mi snaju trudnicu. Sve gori, sve u plamenu. Ja se opet o ne svestim. Kad je došla hitna pomoć da me uzme, ja sam rekla neću, meni ostavite, ja hoću da umrem. Spasite mi snaju. Mrs. Spasic was taken to hospital where her leg was amputated. She did not know that by the side of the road her daughter-in-law lay dead. We'd used these weapons before some 1,400 had already been used in the campaign at this point, and one malfunctioned. Humanitarna, humanitarna intervencija je ubila u nišu u jednom danu 15 ljudi. The bomb in Niš was not the only one that went astray that day. In Belgrade, NATO bombed the Chinese embassy, mistaking it for the headquarters of an arms smuggling company, and they killed three Chinese. The CIA blamed an out-of-date map. The Chinese didn't believe it. And President Yeltsin made the most of it. The French president, alarmed that the Russian-American peace effort would be stopped in its tracks, invited himself to Moscow. L'arrivée a été fraîche. Il n'était pas content. Il n'était pas de bonne humeur. Le président Yeltsin, sur un mode à la fois solennel, mais aussi furieux, euh, a expliqué que ce qui s'était passé, c'est-à-dire le bombardement de l'ambassade de Chine, créait une situation nouvelle. C'était un acte de barbarie qui menait le monde littéralement au bord de la Troisième Guerre mondiale. Je lui ai dit... Il ne s'agit pas pour nous d'ignorer la Russie, encore moins d'humilier la Russie. Nous savons très bien qu'il n'y a pas d'Europe stable sans une Russie stable. Yeltsin disait « da, da, da ». Mais je lui ai dit, vous qui avez résolument engagé votre pays sur la voie de la démocratie et de la modernité. Et Boris Yeltsin, à ce moment-là, euh a dit « Et la liberté ?»« Oui, a dit Chirac, voilà, c'est ça que tu incarnes. » Chirac, déjà tada, a commencé à parler de ce que, mon Dieu, « Da, Milošević, négodiai, da, il faut penser à la démocratisation de l'Ugoslavie. » Vous, Boris Nikolaevich Yeltsin, vous associez, associez votre nom avec celui de Milošević. Vous êtes l'avenir pour la Russie. Tu peux jouer un rôle en plaidant auprès de Milošević pour l'arrêt de cette guerre, Et nous devons reprendre le travail ensemble. Il faut que lorsqu'on enverra des troupes au Kosovo, il y ait non seulement les troupes de l'Alliance Atlantique, mais à nos côtés, les troupes de la Russie. Chirac's idea that Russian troops form part of a Kosovo peacekeeping force was just what Yeltsin was angling for. The Russian-American peace effort could now get started. President Clinton had been very clear, uh, even in the phone call, during the NATO summit, that NATO was going to have to be basically in charge. 
Я же не нанимался к Телбуту в почтальоны передавать, что мне Телбут скажет, а я повез его к Милошевичу. The two peacemakers were so far apart, they needed a mediator of their own. So the president of neutral Finland agreed to join them, on one condition. I didn't know Milosevic from the past, and I didn't know where we were going to go to a negotiation situation. We didn't have to go there. We had to find a common understanding, because otherwise we could break it down to the end of the day. What became known as the Troika had barely got down to work when Talbot got a phone call. It's happening. The, uh, the war crimes tribunal is about to indict uh, Milosevic. The Troika feared that now Milosevic had been indicted for war crimes, he was less likely than ever to capitulate. If convicted, he faced life imprisonment. But Milosevic knew that as long as he remained president of Yugoslavia, he was safe from the International War Crimes Tribunal. Ja ne priznajem tu instituciju, to je politička institucija koja je deo tog mehanizma rasturanja i uništenja srpskog naroda. Imate li razloga da se bojite? To mi već pitanje bolje, nemam nikakvo. Mogu mirno da spavam. Mene frau konnte niemals verstehen dass die NATO als die mächtigste Militärallianz der Welt nicht in der Lage ist, dass äh, das Zentrum des Übels, nämlich Herrn Milosevic, auszuschalten. Äh, sie träumte von James-Bond-Operationen. Wenn er reinkommt und wie man das in den Filmen sieht, den Übeltäter dingfest machen. Äh, ich habe ja erklärt, dass ein Staatsoberhaupt kein Kombatant ist und damit eben nicht wie ein Soldat Ziel militärischer Aktionen sein kann. The solution was to find a target close to Milosevic that they could claim was legitimate. Beneath his residence was the most secure air raid shelter in Belgrade. His home had a big communications um, bunker underneath it, and so we struck at that bunker. But when the residence was hit, the Milosevic's were away. A mi smo tek ujutru došli i videli smo porušenu kuću i zaista svoje stvari razbacane neke po dvorištu. I gdje su te zavese bile ovako po vrhovima drveća? Bilo je tu i neke romantike, tako tužne i volne. Sve je uništeno iz kuće, osim što je preživao krevetac našeg unuka. NATO was finding no quick solutions and its campaign, supposed to last three days, was now entering its third month. The pressure on NATO was growing, as key members faced serious political crises over the war. The most vulnerable government was Germany's. At his party conference, the German foreign minister faced an open revolt. It was a horrible Veranstaltung. Eine vernünftige Diskussion war nicht möglich. Ging mit Trillerpfeifen, dass dieses gegen die Überzeugung vieler in meiner Partei stand, die nie wieder Krieg zu ihrer Grundlage gemacht hat. Das war kurz vor dem Sprengen der Veranstaltung. Ich bekam Farbbeutel ab. Aufs Ohr musste im Krankenhaus das äh, reparieren lassen. The German Chancellor summoned the three men charged with ending the war. Kanslerin Schröders Paineet omassa puolueessa erityisesti vihreiden puolella olivat niin voimakkaita, että hän hän näki suuria vaikeuksia pitää omaakin hallituskoalitiota koossa. 
ja koko Naton niin kohesio oli, oli, oli kärsimässä tästä. Worse was in store. The decision to deploy ground troops, fudged at the NATO summit, could no longer be avoided. If the war was to end before winter, the huge logistical operation to prepare for an invasion of Kosovo had to start soon. Sandy Berger called, and he said, now how long, he said, is it going to take to do the deployment? General Clark, rather ingeniously, was moving uh, forces into the region, uh, into Macedonia, into Albania, uh, Apache helicopters. I mean, he was putting pieces on the board um, by, uh, uh, step by step. I said, I'll look at it again. I've looked at it in great detail, and I think the date is the 1st of June. On June the 1st, the Troika reconvened at a German government guest house outside Bonn. The imminent decision on ground troops made their task even more urgent. They decided not to leave until they had agreed all the terms to put to Milosevic. Mr. Chernobyrden had in his delegation a Russian general by the name of Ivashov. He said no to everything, every conceivable proposition. NATO at the core, no. Total withdrawals, no. You name it, the answer was no. И мы убеждали господина Телбата и его там соратника, он там постоянно на телефоне был с своим руководством, что они к ним, мы им говорили, что вы не сможете ввести можно 30, 50, 150 тысяч. Все равно это сделать невозможно. Лучше это если будут сами делать Югославы. At the end of the day, uh, the disagreement uh, between us was going to come down to one three-letter word, all, A-L-L, -L, which happens also to be a three-letter word uh, in Russian, V-S-E. So the only way to create what is called a secure environment in Kosovo is to get all of the Serbs out. That meant all of the Serb armed forces, all of the paramilitary, all of the special police. Out. All of them. Every one. They took a break so that Chernomirin could phone Moscow and report that the Americans would not budge from the word all. Viktor Stepanovich informed us that NATO will be strong to stand on the full of Serbian forces from Kosovo and the future position to be able to do these conditions on these conditions will not lead to anything but will lead to a military When they resumed the next day, the Americans got a pleasant surprise. The Russians had a um, laptop computer on the table where we were negotiating, and they kept churning out drafts and counter-drafts and redrafts of the paper that uh, Chernomirden was prepared to take with him. And all of a sudden, that morning, the three-letter word popped out, A-L-L. Chernomirden ilmoitti, että hän hyväksyy Ja välittömästi sen jälkeen kenraali Ivasov sanoi, että hänelle ei ole mitään valtuuksia hyväksyä tätä. Oli narukset rasistikin intressejä. No, ja toisia vaatimuksia, joiden kanssa minä en ole sovellut. Oli proignorirovana mielipide vajennyt trioh staron. Ja ni s ni s ni mä tosin oli sovellut. Mä on, on mä pomagal, kaka eli pomagal, eli sanoi, että se on, mitä kasaitsa vajennyt dial. Hän on ei ole missään tapauksessa poliittinen. Для этого у меня был президент, премьер, министр. Вот это все. What the Russian general did not yet know was that Chernomirdin had been instructed by their president and prime minister to play for higher stakes, to gain Russia a foothold in Kosovo. Venäläiset tavoitteena oli saada oma sektori Kosovossa, joka olisi ollut heidän heidän kontrollissaan. Ja se olisi lähinnä ollut se maan pohjoisosa, jossa oli Serbian enemmistö. If you had a Russian sector within Kosovo, it would automatically attract uh, Serbs, and particularly uh, the more militant and violent uh, Serb elements who would want to get in under the Russian umbrella. Amerikanska strana dziestvala nekonstruktivna 
пыталась выбросить Россию из процесса урегулирования. The reason we didn't feel we had to resolve that in the Petersburg talks because it was none of Milosevic's business. What we had to get Milosevic to agree to was get all his people out. They were setting off for a country that had suffered nine weeks of bombing. Growing shortages were taking their toll. The people's tolerance was becoming strained, even in Serbia's most loyal heartland. For over 600 years, the town of Krushevac had been known for its patriotism. In 1389, men from here had marched south into Kosovo to do battle against the infidel. In 1999, the tradition lived on. Krusovac, zbog blizine Kosova, zbog zone odgovornosti u vojnom smislu, je dao imao svojih dragih oko 11,000. Trouble began here when the bodies of four local soldiers were brought back from Kosovo to the town's main hospital. Vrlo je teško podneti takvu jednu vest. Te su vesti kružile od jednog do drugog, dodavalo se nešto, povećavalo se. Kaže se, stiglo je u kapelu četiri leša, onda neko doda nije četiri, nego je četrdeset, pa onda neko doda nije četrdeset, nego je mnogo više. As the rumor spread, a crowd of some 2,000 people, mostly women, gathered on the town square. They went looking for the mayor. They finally tracked down the mayor. Gradonačnik je na veliki pritisak demonstranata na gađanje zgrade u kojoj on bio. Zvižduke, povike, urlanje, kad sam se jako ja. Jer svestan da tog momenta ne mogu njima, ne mogu ih uveriti u istinu. da ga jednog trenutka milicije bojeći se da ga ne povredimo jer su zaista letale kamenice i to malo veće. Obgrlila i vratila nazad u zgradu. Similar protests broke out in two nearby towns. Milosevic became so alarmed that he sent his top soldier to calm down the women. Tako jedno nezadovoljstvo, naravno, bilo je prisutno i u Krušecu. Ja sam obavio razgovor posebno sa roditeljima vojnika, da je najviše bilo majke, naravno, koje su brinule za svoje sinove. A onda smo mi njemu postavljali konkretna pitanja, kad će rezervisti da dođu sa Kosova? Ja sam obećao da ćemo mi omogućiti da se oni vrate, da se odmore, da se izvrši zamena jedinica. Nismo ni verovali. Rumors of the protests soon reached men from Kruševac serving in Kosovo. 
More than a thousand of them hijacked military vehicles filled with weapons and headed for home. Our officers came and stood in front of the hotel and did not allow me to turn, as if you hit me. I came and said, I was listening. I will kill you and yourself, and I will kill you better. Let's go again. The chief of staff intercepted the mutineers a few miles from Kruševac. We have to explain the situation. I have taken the measures to not take any repressions, even though, as you know, it was a war in the state. I have been able to return to the Kosovo from the part of my society and I have been down there for three days, for three days, to get me to the hospital and to get me to the Lipijan prison. Zajedno sa učkama, zajedno sa mojim neprijateljem do kojim sam se juče borio. Juče sam se borio s tim ljudima, a sad u isli ćeli sam bio. Absurd i sramota. The mutiny was contained, but it was a warning that the Serb people had a breaking point. Would Milosevic heed the warning? Milosevic had risen to power by exploiting popular support for Serb nationalism. Seventy-eight days of bombing had weakened that support. As he prepared to greet the Troika, he knew the terms they would bring could only be humiliating. Could he salvage enough to keep the Serb people behind him and stay in power? As Chernomyrdin landed in Belgrade, NATO was making no secret of its preparations for a ground war. The proposal the Troika brought was virtually an ultimatum dictated from Washington. Siinä oli selvästi tämmöisen ultimaattumin makua, mutta se piti yrittää esittää sillä lailla, että tämä oli paras neuvottelutulos, mihin me olimme pystyneet näissä neuvotteluissa, kolmikantaneuvotteluissa. Milosevic was promised that the proposed peacemakers would not carry the NATO banner. Pričaj mu je rekao da je postigo da sve more ići kroz sistemu jedinih nacija, i da se u svemu tome mora sačuvati teritorijalni integritet i suverenitet Jugoslavije. Sterno Mjudin omassa puheenvuorossaan totesi, että tästä seuraa, että Kosovosta tulee autonominen osa Jugoslavia. Milosevic sanoi, että voisiko hän tehdä jotain parannusehdotuksia näihin. Ja mä totesin, että ikävä kyllä ei. Moni sadržao te garantsije i suvereniteta, i teritorijalnog integriteta, i odgovornosti ujednijih nacija za politički proces. On vzjavo dokumente, poprosil nas, što on je u apsudio v pravitljstvu, a na sljedeći dje na skupšini, to je v parlamenti. I potom da sta atvjet. Zatim on poprosil, mi mu na to vse zakončilo. Artizari in the formal Trojka delegation left not knowing if they'd done enough to make Milosevic back down. Затем президент Милошевич встретился только с российской делегацией. А затем он попросил меня остаться. Мы еще с ним часа три переговорили. Они с Милошевичем тогда рекли, да, у кого не прихвати условия, кои со они ту ой понудили, да, че дочи до те копне на агрессии. Ми смо знали да имамо некакве шансе da nanesemo odgovarajuće gubitke NATO snagama koje ne bi mogle da podnesu takve gubitke. U celom i sama jugoslavska armija, to je taka bojesposobna armija s kojoj ne zna ni šitati. Pa je to mu i on poznavao da što ako se počne na zemlji, on je govorio da će počne na zemlji. Tamo je bilo more krvi. Čudno mi je da je skonio stvari sa stola, Lupio rukom o sto i rekao, draga gospodo, ako ne prihvatite ovo što vam se nudi, Srbija će biti ravna kao ove sto ispred nas. I u konješnjima imamo govorili, što ti imaju vidu, što je dalje bude, u toge 
э, там действительно никакой победы не будет, а просто мы уничтожат страну людей. Али да смо ми тада одбили тај нихо заједнички предлог, они би онда могли слободно да кажу, ево, и Русији и Руском предлогу су рекли не, то значи да је реч о земљи, о народу, koji se ne može ni na kakav način urazumiti, jer zamislite čak ni ruski predlog. Parlament duly approved Milosevic's decision. The war was over. President Artisari reported to the German Chancellor, who welcomed him with delight. The settlement had come just in time to save his government. All the NATO leaders heaved a sigh of relief that bombing alone had brought Milosevic to heel. Is the peace process, the withdrawal of the Serb troops and the other matters proceeding on schedule today? The Serb forces are withdrawing. Uh, they're withdrawing a, in a fashion that uh, appears uh, to our commanders to be consistent with their commitment to be gone uh, in the 11-day time period. But what President Clinton did not know was that the Russians and Milosevic had a secret plan to secure their own slice of Kosovo. We thought that Russia should have had its own sector. We thought that this question would be discussed. We were promised that this would be discussed. The day before the Serb forces were due to withdraw from Kosovo, the British general in charge of the force that was to replace them reported a hitch. Mike Jackson called and said he didn't want to go in on Friday, June 11th. The Serbs had asked him, could he delay for an additional day? They were not going to be in the position to start their withdrawal uh, the following morning, um, just on organizational terms, not in any sort of uh, 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 sinister or, or backtracking or any of that. The Serbs' real reason for delaying the NATO deployment was to let Russian troops get to Kosovo first to secure their sector. As I got ready to go to the NATO video teleconference, a note was handed to me. It said the Russians are, the Russians are, are crossing the Drina, preparing to cross the Drina River. This time, NATO found itself facing a ground war it hadn't planned for. Morning. The Secretary General's notes record the moment the truth hit them. Cree que los rusos habían acordado todo esto con Milosevic, que esto es un que vamos a la partición de de Kosovo, teme que vayamos a la partición. I said, don't you think we need to look at a military response? He said, absolutely. Tomamos la decisión de que las tropas de K4 que estaban al mando del general británico Jackson empiecen a ir hacia Pristina también lo más rápido posible. We got official instructions to look at denying the Pristina airfield to that Russian force. So very confusing fact situation, a Russian leadership situation at that stage, very, very frayed. Um, and we're suddenly in a situation where our fear was, after 78 days, we would wind up with a partitioned Kosovo, which was precisely what we'd fought this war against. Moscow was clearly up to something. Clinton's Russian advisor was sent there to confront the Russian foreign minister. Ivanov said that he regretted to inform us that uh, there had indeed uh, been an accidental uh, deployment 
uh, Russian forces uh, into Kosovo, but that it was an accident and they would be out uh, in a matter of hours. So contrite was the Russian foreign minister that he agreed to phone a statement to CNN. As early as he dared, the foreign minister woke his colleagues. The foreign minister now learned that his president had been behind the whole operation. They decided to raise the stakes and send reinforcements to Pristina airport. We were getting information reports that the Russians were loading aircraft. In fact, it was on Moscow television, apparently, showing pictures of air, airplanes and paratroops boarding aircraft and so forth. NATO was put on standby. The commander of the Kosovo force was ordered to prepare to block the runway at Pristina airport by landing helicopters there. The force was given a warning order. We went on to 15 minutes notice to move. The British general was concerned that what he had been ordered to do was dangerously confrontational. His boss flew to Kosovo to talk him round. He said, I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't send the Apaches up there to block those runways. You don't have the authority to order me to do this. This is not part of my mission. I'm not going to do this. And I'm not taking any more instructions from Washington. My authority is quite clearly defined both in task and ability to change those tasks and missions. The British government backed their general. Clark was ordered to abandon the plan to block the runways. NATO had urgently to find another way to stop the Russians. A very tense moment. I would say this is one of the tensest moment in US-Russian relations uh, in the last 10 years, where we actually uh, were close to a confrontation. To reach Kosovo, the Russian Air Force had three possible routes. They could fly over Hungary, Romania, or Bulgaria, all former members of the Soviet bloc. The Russian Air Force contacted its Hungarian counterparts and received permission to overfly. It looked as though President Yeltsin had pulled it off. But now NATO deployed a formidable weapon, the telephone. So we called through every channel possible and probably multiple channels simultaneously telling them not to give the Russians clearance over their airspace. Hungary had just joined NATO and NATO's strategic interest was pointed out to them. They reversed their decision. Romania and Bulgaria had applied to join NATO they too refused Russia permission to overfly their territory. Although the Russians had secured Pristina airport, with no means to fly in reinforcements and supplies, their triumph was short-lived. Moscow had gambled and lost. Milosevic came out empty-handed with Kosovo under international control and no Russian sector for the Serbs to dominate. All the Milosevic family had to offer the Serb people was Bambi Park.
son Marco's latest business venture, which his mother opened soon after the war. Milosevic, the indicted war criminal, now presided over a bomb-damaged and bankrupt country. But he was safe from the international tribunal as long as he remained president of Yugoslavia. In March 1999, when Milosevic refused to stop his forces terrorizing the people of Kosovo, the Western powers bombed him into submission. Though Serbia retained sovereignty over Kosovo in name, Milosevic had been forced to give up real control of the province to the United Nations. Milosevic's wars had impoverished the Serb people and made them international pariahs. Young people especially wanted change and were prepared to take risks. Milosevic they called their movement Otpor, resistance. And their message spread like the wind around Serbia. Predictably, Otpor's activists were targeted by Milosevic's police. To welcome the millennium, Otpor invited the public to a rock concert in central Belgrade. 25,000 people turned up. Belgrade star drummer performed with his band to keep the crowd happy till midnight when the rock concert was due to begin. U jednom trenutku smo mi sabotirali kompletnu rasvetu na Trgu Republike. I upalio se jedno ogromno platno sa videobimom koje je na jednom kranu bilo. Jovan Otašević, Nenad Vitković. Jedan glas je počeo da čita imena ljudi koji su poginuli, osakaćeni u Miloševićevim bespisnim ratovima. Sanja Živković. Goran Živković. Taj prvi trenutak sam vidio na licima koji nije bio još uvijek dovoljno jasan. Ljudi su, aha, ovo je sad neka šala. Ovo je neka šala. Posle trećeg lika nastao je jedan tajac. Srbijo, da li znaš ko su ovi ljudi? Prebijeni, iznevereni, mrtvi. And after the roll call, there was no rock concert. I stigao je do kraja. I rekao je, idite sad kući jer nema razloga na slavlje. I ljudi su stali sleđeni i počeli polako da se razilaze. To je bila užasno jaka poruka. But Milosevic wasn't worried. A year after the war, his government had rebuilt most of the 55 bridges destroyed by NATO. His reconstruction program was a triumph. He announced that he would stand for re-election a year before his mandate ran out. Milosevic was confident because Serbia's many opposition parties could not get their act together. We only saw when we were talking about the 
I ljudi su videli da mi uopšte ne komuniciramo, da se ne pozdravljamo. Mogu da vam kažem da je moj utisak bio da ćemo te izbore dobiti jako lako. Mi sa te liste, mi levičari. In Washington, the Secretary of State feared the policy she had fought for was collapsing. She summoned her advisors. You know, we'd done the bombing, a uh, lot of people had suffered, and these people, if you could just get them to deal with each other, there would be some kind of a unified opposition. She pounded her fist on the table and looked at the room and said, I want you all to understand. Getting rid of Milosevic is my highest personal priority. I want him gone before I'm gone. She set out to turn Serbia's opposition parties into an instrument for regime change. Over $30 million worth of aid provided them with all the campaigning skills of the world's largest democracy. This American expertise identified the opposition's biggest challenge finding a candidate with universal appeal. Znači trebalo je samo naći ili ličnost ili organizaciju koja bi iskoračila iz tog što je narod video kao jedna jedan lični sukob sujeta. Džinđić and his colleagues looked for a front man to challenge Milosevic and settled on the leader of what was known as the Van Party as it was claimed that all its members could fit into a single van. A law lecturer, Vojslav Kostunica, was notable for what he wasn't. He wasn't corrupt, he wasn't a friend of either the West or Milosevic, and he'd never been smeared by the state media. Znači, on je kao, kao proizvod vrlo dobar za reklamu, jer vi ne morate se borite protiv negativnih predrasuda. But one person was not so sure about the choice of candidate. Možda je više dilema od toga da li će ovu ponudu i prihvatiti sam imao ja sam nego što su imali drugi predsjednici stranaka u DOS. After five days mulling it over, he accepted the challenge. His colleagues breathed a sigh of relief. I moram da kažem nešto, to je značilo ipak ličnu hrabrost da izađete, ali u stvari sada vi ste protivnik Milošeću. Milosevic, confident of victory, limited his election campaign to a few visits to friendly factories. He left it to his wife and coalition partner to tour the country making speeches. Bila sam na takozvanom terenu ceo mesec septembar, sve do izbora. Zaista sam komunicirala onako sa građanima na jedan učenički način, na jedan školski način u tom smislu. Milosevic and his school mom found themselves facing a student revolt. The opposition used the young people of Otpor as its election shock troops. Otpor je vodio svoju negativnu kampanju protiv Miloševića, to je kampanja gotov je. Surovo ponavljala gotov je, gotov je, gotov je, gotov je, gotov je. Opposition leaders even encouraged Otpor to provoke the police. To je bilo malo i možda i zloupotreba, ali mi nismo nikada tu njih terali da idu dalje nego što bi oni sami išli. Svaki uhopšeni član otpora je značio hiljadu glasova više za nas. The opposition ran a slick and energetic campaign. But they expected Milosevic, who still controlled all state institutions, to steal the election. One of Milosevic's former allies, the ex-mayor of Belgrade, had changed sides and was now a key opposition strategist. Kad smo Zoran se ja čuli, ja sam ja sam mu rekao da ja hoću da izađemo sa jasnim konceptom i da da taj koncept ne treba da zna sto ljudi. 
A week before polling day, seven key members of the opposition met secretly in a sports club in suburban Belgrade. They were led to a private room which had been swept for bugging devices. They were here to decide how far they would go if, as they expected, they won the election, but Milosevic refused to stand down. Znam da su neki bili onako pomalo začuđeni otkud ja sad u tom pravcu, a i to je zadatak. Ne možete da pozovete policiju jer policija radi za njega, ne možete da pozovete sud jer sud radi za njega. Ja sam tim ljudima rekao mi moramo večeras da odlučimo nas sedmorica ili osmorica, da li smo mi spremni da poginemo posle izbora zbog rezultata izbora. Dogovorili smo se da ćemo ići do potpunog kraja, ako treba i do, da tako kažemo, oruženog ustanka, jer više se nije moglo ići nazad. By late morning on election day, it was clear the turnout was unusually high, a bad sign for Milosevic. The polls closed at 8 p.m. At their high-tech results center in Belgrade, the Democratic Party raced to gain a tactical advantage by announcing their estimate of the results ahead of Milosevic. Predsjednički kandidat demokratske opozicije Srbije ima 57% osvojenih glasova. Predsjednički kandidat socialističke partije Srbije i Jugoslovenske levice 33%. Milosevic turned to the instruments of power still at his disposal. The election commission was packed with his supporters. They conceded that Kostunica had won more votes, but declared that he had only 49%, just short of the outright majority required. This gave Milosevic a lifeline. The commission ordered a second round of voting. <laughs> Da li, ako sam ga dobio voljom birača, voljom naroda, da li ja mogu taj narod obmanuti, pogaziti preko nečega što je bila njegova volja? Znači, ne priznati tu volju. Ako sam odlučio da drugog kruga izbora neće biti. Pobedili smo uprkos lažima i nasilju Slobodana Miloševića. To stop the second round of voting, the opposition had to break the rules, and quickly. They called a general strike. An hour from the capital was one of the engines of Milosevic's socialism. The coal from the Kolubra mine provides two-thirds of all Serbia's electricity. Milosevic had always taken good care of its 17,000 workers. We were aware of all these 10 years that there were wages at a level in the same way in relation to the other people who were employed in Serbia. And what was most important, they were always ready. But the opposition had activists in key jobs at the mine. They told the miners that a strike at Kolubra could create the momentum to topple Milosevic. Ljudi su iznad svih očekivanja. Ne da su kazali da su za to, nego čak su kazali šta ste čekali do sada. Within the hour, production had stopped in all four of Kolubra's coal fields. Soon, 300 of the strikers were living at the mine to stop Milosevic's forces taking over. The government turned the screw. Okružno javno tužilaštvo u Beogradu danas je stavilo zahtev za sprovođenje istrage istražnom sudi Okružnog suda u Beogradu protiv Aleksandra Karića, 
Zorana Cvetanovića. Ukoliko bi one bile sasvim zaustavljene, u Srbiji bi bez struje ostale bolnice i porodilišta i u njima najnemoćni deo populaciji. Deca u inkubatorima, pacijenti na dijalizi, rekonvalescenti, pacijenti na operacijonim stolovima. The battle for Kalubra was in the balance. But with the second round of voting only five days away, opposition leaders had to plan their next move. They met in Belgrade. Znali smo da mora da bude neki deadline, to je bio 5. oktober, dan kada svi ljudi dolaze u Beograd iz cele Srbije. They agreed that on the 5th of October, D-Day, they would send convoys from five cities containing every able-bodied man they could muster. They would all converge on Belgrade at around midday. Bilo je jasno da mi moramo da idemo dalje od samo skupljanja na ulici, da moramo da uđemo u institucije. I onda smo napravili jednu mapu važnih institucija. Once in Belgrade, they would target key buildings, beginning with the federal parliament and the TV station. And they agreed that this was the day their pledge to defend their election victory with force might have to be carried out. Što se tiče oružja, na ovim prostorima nikad nije nedostajalo oružja, pogotovo u poslednjih desetak, desetak godina. Tako da su ljudi imali sasvim dobro oružje i dobru opremu. I to su bili ljudi koji su znali da sa tim rukuju, znači profesionalci su u tom delu, da kažem, posla. Inače je svako imao određene oružane grupe. Well, almost all of them. Ja sam se uvek bojao od posledica jednog nasilja koje se ne može kontrolisati od te spirale nasilja. Kostunica je žurio na neku drugu njegovu obavezu i znao je kompletno za odluku. They all knew that Milosevic stood to lose more than his presidency. Without the protection of office, he could be extradited to the Hague. Through his chief of police, he issued some desperate orders. Pre podne nazvali su me odavde iz uprave policije iz I rekli da pripremimo određeni broj ljudi, da budu sa potpunim naoružanjem, opremom i tako dalje. Pa kao tvoja jedinica treba prva tamo da uđe, znaš to treba da se zauzme, taj rudnik, rudare treba, ja kažem, ima neki priča da treba nešto da se puce ili ne znam sve, ba ne, znaš to treba eliminisati. Kada smo prišli, stali smo, ali smo tu već primetili da ima mnogo policije. The colonel, backed by 750 police, addressed the striking miners. Ja sam im rekao, gospodo, moj zadatak je da vi izađete ispred kapije u rudniku, da bi mi štitili postrojenja koje se ovde nalaze, a vi, ako ne bi to ispunili i ne uradite onako kako vam kažemo, mi ćemo morati da upotrebujemo neka druga sredstva da bi to napravili. I imate rok od 15 minuta da to učinite. But the strikers were in touch with the opposition leadership and knew that support was on the way. Bukvalno iz svih gradova su ljudi dolazili autobusima, kolima, peške, preko njeva. The police kept them out for two hours. Then a bus broke through. Several thousand opposition supporters followed in its wake. Mobilni telefon koji se imao i stanica non stop su se uključivali, zvonili, gospodin Stevanović me pritiskao. Verovatno i njega neko pritiskao što kažu dalje, ajmo šta se čeka, jeste krenuli, nismo krenuli i tada ja počinjem jednu, da kažem, igru sa njima, počinjem da im objašnjam kako zauzimamo jednu zgradu, zauzimamo drugu zgradu, zauzimamo drobilarnu, zauzimamo trafostanicu. Hopelessly outnumbered, the police could do nothing. The miners' strike was now causing power cuts in Belgrade. 
The day before the opposition's push on the capital, all Serbia saw that Milosevic was not invulnerable. He sent instructions to his police commanders. The commander the opposition feared most was the leader of Milosevic's special operations unit, a secretive man known simply as Legia. This is the only known film of him. At 4 p.m. on the day before D-Day, Džinđić got a call. Ja sam rekao, Legija se javio i tražio da se vidimo. I onda bi postavilo se pitanje, da li treba da idem? I mislim da je većina rekla, to je najlakši način da te Milošević sada likvidira. To je sigurno klopka. Moja žena je rekla, ako Legija bude sutra intervenisao, likvidirat će te sutra. Tako da, nema neke velike razlike. I odvezli smo se u ulici Admirala Geprata. Tamo je čekao njegov džip, jedan veliki džip sa zatamljenim staklima. Vrata od džipa su bila otvorena. On je bio u maskirnoj uniformi. Potpuno imao je dva pištolja tu i tako bio jedan sportski tip. I onda sam ga pitao šta misliš ti o svemu ovome što se događa. Rekao, ja mislim da je Milošević pokrao izbore i da je on izgubio. I da ja nemam nameru da zbog čovjeka koji je pokrao izbore pucam na bilo koga. Legija seemed to be changing sides, but Džinđić couldn't be sure. D-Day. At dawn, convoys left five cities in Serbia for the decisive confrontation with Milosevic. The first test for the convoy from Užica came 25 miles down the road. Naišli smo na tunel, ispred tunela je bio kordon policije. Ja sam izišao i pošao prema njima, obratio im se. Oni su bili potpuno onako opremljeni za obračun. Pitao čemu je stvar, komandira te jedinice. On je rekao, znate, u tunelu je prepreka, ne možete da prođete kroz tunel, jer je pesak. Cijel tunel je ispunjen gomilom peska. Ja sam rekao, dobro, ko što vidite imamo bager, možete da se pomerite da mi prođemo. On je ušao u tunel, sklonio ovu gomilu peska, izbacio. Dok se to radilo, ja sam prošao kroz tunel. The convoy from Čačak was even better equipped. We were already planning which car, how, on which way, we were filled with stones, then one team was with the Čekićima, with these big stones, the other with the stones. The police were there, the police were there. Then they made us the barricades from the Dona, so we couldn't go to the door.
Neverovatna motivisanost pri prvim sudarima sa kordonima, sa policijom, kada su ljudi rukama jednostavno prevrtali šlepere, nosili kamione, sklanjali prepreke. The protesters from Chachak broke through three more roadblocks on their way to Belgrade. The police managed to turn back only one convoy. By midday, the other four had all made it to the capital. By then, the drummers were summoning the city's residents to the streets. Deca se igraju, vi to završite i nemoj da se vraćaš dok to ne bude gotovo. Many had the same thought. There was no going back until it was finished. Tražio sam promjenu, normalno, kao i sam narod, normalan narod. Stajao sam sitan, nikad kada mi udari dva šamara, pandur sa pendrikove bi pao. Nešto mi govorilo, idi sa mašinom, ako odeš sa mašinom, završit ćeš posao, ako ne odeš. By three o'clock, the digger man and the drummers were amongst more than half a million protesters, facing some 4,000 police on the streets of Belgrade. They had come to bring Milosevic down. First, as planned, they turned on the federal parliament. One of our young sports players here, who was nervous that it didn't start immediately. I wanted to buy time until we didn't come. Until we didn't come, we didn't come. He took a flash and took the police in front of him, and then there was chaos. Then they took us first. Onda je krenuo suzavac, kad je krenuo suzavac, naravno, odošlo je do strašnog komesanja. Onda sam malo i neke bubljare pogubio. I strašno sam se prepao za njih. I onako lišen svih ograda sam, iako sam bio bučen, ne znam, imao sam sako, pantalone, pošelju, potrčao u zgradu parlamenta. Bilo je vrlo neprijatno, odande su pucali suzavac i izbacivali na nas. U nekoliko talasa smo probali da uđemo, pa smo se vraćali, pljuvali, plakali od suzavca. Each time the tear gas cleared, the crowd surged forward again. Pošao sam na skupštinu, neki momci su pokušavali da uđu u skupštinu, ja ih gledam, skaku ću da dovate prvi sprat, nema šanse. Rekao sad, čekajte, sad ću vam ja pomognem. Ja upali mašinu i... Jedan prozor, pa onda drugi, pa onda ih napunim u letnu prašiku. Podignem ih na prvi sprat, kao lift. Podignem ih gore i oni uđu, razbiju prozor, uđu u prvi sprat. Many policemen had failed to show up for work that day. Their colleagues, vastly outnumbered, did not open fire. The main doors of the parliament were opened. The crowd surged in. namješte u tom holu, da budu agresivni prema policiji, da im skidaju delove uniforme, da im otimaju maske ili pendreke. 
za pomaganje policajaca koji su bili u Saveznoj skupštini. Pogledali smo se onako kako smo to obično radili, kao ajmo idemo da izvučemo ljude. But they never made it. He and his men were themselves trapped by protesters in a nearby street. An opposition leader went to their rescue. Ja sam izašao, otišao u Kosovsku ulicu i od ulaza do ulaza sa obezbiđenjem vadio policajce koji su bili prestrašeni, koji su plakali, koji su ukvalno, mislim, jedna jedna onako vrlo ružna, ružna slika svega toga. Ja sam ga zamolio i rekao sam, ja vas samo molim ako možete da mi izvučete ove policajce, za mene nije toliko uopšte bitno. Ako je, što kažu, potrebno za to da čak i jedan mrtav pukovnik ili šta drugo nije problem. Policajci smo izveli napolje u grupama, narod je onako protestovao, onda smo mi rekli da su to naši policajci, da su oni sa nama, da oni neće nikakve sukobe. Milosevic now called on the police colonel who had carried out some of the most brutal missions in Kosovo. Sada mi je preneto naređenje da u helikopter stavimo određenu količinu suzavca i da pokušamo da rasteramo masu koja se nalazila ispred skupštine. Kutije Sa suzavcem bile su teške svaka, znači, oko desetak kilograma. A baciti takvu jednu kutiju sa visine od par stotina metara izazvalo bi ubistvo tih ljudi koje bi ta kutija pogodila. Dobili smo još jedan poziv u vazduhu. Možemo li da dejstvujemo? Mi smo rekli da smo visoko i da nam smeta dim od zapaljenih zgrada. Ja sam im samo preneo da krećemo dalje. Pravac baza, nema uslova za rat. From his fortress home in the suburbs, Milosevic called on his last resort. Je mene zvao tek kada je... Kada se pojavio onaj požar u Savjeznoj skupštini, da, onda je on rekao da vojska treba da zaštiti Savjezne institucije. Pa mi je navio carinu, navio mi je televiziju, Savjeznu skupštinu i tako dalje. Ja verujem da to obezbeđuje Savjeznim upsovim snagama i sredstvima da bi vojska imala problema, jer mi nismo obučeni da izađemo na ulicu u masi i da se jednostavno sa tom masom borimo na način kako to mu pradi. Pa ništa, on je prekinuo taj razgovor sa mnom, rekao mi da nisam izvršio taj naređenje i tako. Shvatio sam da je ljud zbog toga. By now, the protesters were besieging the state television building. Here, the police put up stiffer resistance. I ja sam krenuo na televiziju i svirao sam kao da idem u napad da se predaju. Otvore vrata i kad ja najdem, oni jedan iznad drugog ovako stanu i pucaju. Ja sam digao sam kašiku i branio sam se. Spustio sam kašiku koliko mi odgovara. I ulazio sam u televiziju, ono je pucalo, lanilo, drobilo. Panduri počeli beže kao pacovi unutra. Svako je nosio ili toljage neke, ili one cevi što sam im ja dao, ili cigle, išli su direktno na Pandura da ga ubiju. Joe's digger had sustained 80 bullet holes. But by 5.30 p.m. the police had fled and the TV building was in flames. By 6.30, all three state TV channels were off the air. Sračio sam da od rane zore, ja nisam išao do WC-a. Moja koncentracija je bila samo jedno. Kako 
omogućiti narodu da dođe do Skupštine i da se jednom za sva vremena završi sa tim režimom. Onog trenutka kad sam shvatio da nisam, ne znam koliko sati već, ovo je bio već, ja sam se u piški ugaće. Sreća moja da mi je dobož bio tu, pa to nije niko ni vidio. The police, defeated and demoralized, no longer knew who was in charge. Ja sam otišao do kuće, mom sinu koji je gledao onako kako sam mene u stanju u kome sam bio i rekao, tata, šta se dešava? Ja sam pokušao to da mu objasnim. Eto vidiš, šta ti je recimo do ponedeljka navijaš za zvezdu i onda u ponedeljak neko opali šamar i kaže, čekaj, pa nije zvezda najbolji klub nego Partizan, treba da navijaš za Partizan i ti počneš da navijaš za Partizan. barem jedno deseta hiljada ljudi na ulicama naoružanih. To je sada postalo za nas dosta ovako simptomatično, šta se to dešava i jednostavno pojačali smo te mere opreze. I da su, nama su sve građani javili na mobilni, kaže evo tenkovi su tu i radili su njihovi motori. President-elect Kostunica went to a suburban TV studio to be interviewed. Nikakvog revanšizma ne može biti. Mi se sutra moramo već navikavati da živimo jedni pored drugih u sve političke razlike, u sve razlike koje su produbljene. The opposition had won the day, but had they won the war? In the early hours, some of them met secretly in a Belgrade restaurant with three senior policemen. Oni su došli, opkolili restoran Crvene Beretke, a mi smo opkolili njih, znači svi su sve opkolili. Pitanje je bilo da li mi možemo da računamo da policija neće intervenisati, ako Milošević ponovo naredi, da li u policiji postoje grupe koje hoće da nas ubiju, u kakvom stanju se nalazi policija. Bilo je tu određenih i priča, naravno, da će vojska pokušati, uslovno rečeno, da poništi sve ovo što se dešavalo i da će pokušati da zaštiti Miloševića i vrati ga na vlast. Nama je bilo važno da njima objasnimo da je veliki problem, da se veliki problem sprema. Međutim, samim time da su dve ovakve jedinice u tom momentu, znači Legina i Moja, koje su brojale, da kažem, i više od hiljadu dobro, dobro obučenih ljudi, bila na ovoj strani je bila velika garancija da bar možemo da izdržimo prvi udar, da kažem, dok se narod ne izorganizuje za takav vid borbe. When the sun rose, Belgrade was quiet. Milosevic had often shown amazing skill at escaping from political disasters. Everyone wondered what he would do now. President-elect Kostunica asked the army chief of staff to arrange a meeting with President Milosevic. It was the first time the two men had ever met. Milosevic had started, but without neke uverljivosti i sigurnosti koje njega inače odlikuje, da mi objašnjava kako je premda izgubio izbore, još uvek ima iza sebe jedan mandat koji treba da traje neki godinu dana. Smo rekao naravno da to nije tačno. On je preko toga prešao relativno brzo. Onog trenutka kada sam ga upozorio na nešto što sam znao da postoji u tom trenutku, to je službeni list, dakle, Savjezna Republika Jugoslavije, u kojem su objavljeni pravi, stvarni izborni rezultati. Otruću vam jednu tajnu. Ja sam od gospodina Koštunice čuo da je Ustavni sud doneo odluku da je on pobedio. Slobodan je to prihvatio i samo mu je rekao da misli da nije lepo da njegov mandat počinje time što je nekoliko sati pre toga uništeno sve Markova u Požarevicu na jedan brutalan način i tako dalje. Milosevic asked Koštunica if he could address the people. Poštovani građani, upravo sam dobio službenu informaciju da je Vojislav Koštunica pobedio na predsjedničkim izborima. Tu odluku je donao organ koji po ustavu na njima pravo i smatram da ona mora da se pošto. Milosevic was now a private citizen and a wanted man indicted for war crimes by the International Court of the Hague. 
his son Marco saw the writing on the wall. Je u to vreme stigao Marko sa svojom porodicom i ja sam bila okupirana njegovom reakcijom i njegovim spremanjem da napusti zemlju. I moram da vam kažem da mi tada ništa nije bilo tako važno kao to kako se on osjećao i šta on planira. Vojslav Kostunica was inaugurated. To the outside world, there was now nothing to stop Milosevic being extradited. America called for him to be handed over. I believed, as I always have, that American leadership was essential and that we had the power to do it. I went to Belgrade to meet President Kostunica. We began speaking about the tribunal. Sam ja iznosio one poznate prigovore na, na račun načina na ha, koji Haški sud radi, dakle reč o jednoj proceduri koja je potpuno mimo nečega što je običajna krivična procedura, bilo da je reč o um, angloameričkom ili evropskom uh, pravu. I naravno o jednoj vrsti selektivnosti kad je reč o um, uh, sprovođenju pravde u radu Haškog suda. I said to him, this is not something on which you really have a choice. This is a clear marker of your acceptance of the rule of law. And you'll find increasing insistence from the West, united on the need to cooperate fully with the tribunal. The new prime minister was on the Americans' side. Oni su nam rekli treba da sarađujete sa sudom u Hagu i da u samoj Srbiji pokrenete postupke protiv ratnih zločinaca i da pokažete da želite da rešite taj problem. Mi smo rekli da, to je i naš interes. To extradite Milosevic for war crimes could have been dangerous for the new government. A Serbian criminal charge would be more acceptable politically. Conveniently, one of the ex-president's closest colleagues, the head of Serbian customs, told the police that Milosevic was behind a massive fraud on the state treasury. Tome da je Milošević organizovao takvo trošenje para. <clears throat> Ako se dobro sećam, to je bilo negde uh, uh, oko 300 miliona dolara. Milosevic's supporters rallied to him. The previously reclusive president now mingled with them. This would be his last day as a free man. Dobili smo informaciju od naših ljudi koji se nalaze ispred kapija predsjednikove kuće da se tamo nalazi šest vozila u kojima se nalaze ljudi obučeni u crne uniforme pod punim naoružanjem i kola hitne pomoći. Milosevic's supporters kept the police at bay. njih je bila starosti 60-70 godina. I onda je, su oni malta ne provocirali policajce na način da su ih čupali, da su ih golicali, da su ih gurali, da su ih, ne znam, unosili im se u lice. The government sent in its crack SWAT team, led by Milosevic's former defender, Legija. The SWAT team got no further than the entrance gate. Two policemen and a journalist were shot and wounded. Ako da sam ja u u toj situaciji tu uz indirektne kontakte sa ljudima koji se nalazili oko kuće, 
rešio da ja probam da razgovaram sa njimi. Nije bilo vode, kući u kojoj nisu funkcionisale telefonske linije, koja je u potpunosti izgubila, izgubila svaki osjećaj za realnost, sa čerkom koja je sama rekla da je u tom trenutku bila pod desnom sedativa i, i bar dve, dve, dve flaše nekog alkohola. Da je njemu predstavnik vlade, u prisustvu mom i u prisustvu naše čerke i nekoliko drugova od njegovih partijskih rekao da on treba da ode u zatvor i da ako to odbije, da će biti pobijeni svi koji se nalaze u kući. Milošević je držao pištolj u ruci koji je bio otkočen. I on je rekao ja živ iz ove kuće neću izaći. It was at this point that President Kostunica returned from a trip abroad. He summoned the ministers responsible. Jasno je dakle da ni jedan čovek, pa ni Slobodan Milošević nije vredan građanskog sukoba i krvoprolića. Ne može se ni ne sme pojedinac ugroziti opšti državni i nacionalni interes. Hvala vam. To bila i značajna poruka samom Miloševiću da ne može računati ni na zaštu vojske, ni na zaštu predsjednika Koštunice. Milošević had run out of friends in high places. Tako da se njegova argumentacija menjala od toga da je on pobedio sve do toga da je njemu jasno da je on poražen. Nastroje smo bili sami i on mi je rekao da šta, su, šta mu je ovaj preneo i da on odluči da to prihvati. I u trenutku ga je zvao sin i Slobodan mu je rekao Marko, ja sam to prihvatio, ići ću u zatvor. After 33 hours under siege, Milosevic walked out to the waiting police car. As he did so, his daughter produced a gun and shot at the government negotiator. She missed. Milosevic became prisoner number 101980 in cell 1121 of Belgrade Central Prison. He was charged with defrauding the state treasury. But this was not enough to satisfy the West. They wanted Milosevic in The Hague to face the charge of genocide. Prime Minister Džinđić mistrusted a legal system still dominated by Milosevic appointees. Ili smo morali da ga pošaljemo u Hag, ili da prekinemo čitav taj proces i da praktično vratimo ponovo zemlju u izolaciju. Tek poslednje dva, tri dana nešto nije bilo sumnjivo. Nešto, neka atmosfera u zatvoru, neki pregledi koji su mu tražili, otiske prstiju, slikanje i tako dalje. To me je malo uznemirilo. Supporters of Milosevic began to protest near the prison. But this time the government was taking no chances. They whisked Milosevic away by helicopter. At The Hague, he is charged with ethnic cleansing, including responsibility for numerous murders in Croatia, in Bosnia, and in Kosovo. He is conducting his own defense with relish. Videli ste znači izvađena srca, odsečene glave i šta ste još videli od tih tih varvarca o kojima govorite? Šta me poma maštije će skapo mer maštije. Se mi ba sakra uđinan. Pa navedite to sve što ste videli. Interesuje me sve to što ste vi videli. We have dealt sufficiently with that. The witness has given his evidence. You have had your time. And your time is now finished. <laughs>